And good afternoon from Northwest, Northwest Arena in Jamestown, New York, where Nickel City Hockey Network brings you live coverage of the UNY CHL Tier 1 Championship. And we've got the Battle of the Falls today between the Niagara County Community College Thunderwolves and the Niagara University Purple Eagles. Hello, everybody. My name is Sean McHugh, joined on the broadcast by color commentator and producer Aaron Alpern, camera operator Jeff Jazarowski, just about ready for a puck drop. But before we get started, I do want to thank you very much for joining our broadcast as live coverage of the UNYCHL on Nickel City Hockey Network is brought to you by Buffalo Golf and Social, Buffalo's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. Aaron, it's Championship Sunday, and we've got the Battle of the Falls today. What do you expect after we had two great games yesterday between these two teams? Well, I would expect a uh, continuation of what these two teams did yesterday as it was Niagara with a clinic against uh, Cornell in the first game, the first semifinal here in the Tier 1 division. They basically uh, came and did everything that they wanted to do, playing a really sound team game in all three zones. They definitely earned their 5-1 win yesterday. Meanwhile, Niagara County Community College, they just want to keep it going. They, uh, they put a nice little run together here. They knocked off the top team in the country, St. Bonaventure, last week. Then they knocked off the number four team in the country, that being Binghamton, last night. Now they get a shot at the number two team in the country as they get to face off against their crosstown rival, the Niagara University Purple Eagles, in a battle for the Tier 1 championship in the UNYCHL. And I did get to catch up with Niagara, Niagara County Community College coach Drew Lair, Drew Lair today, and he told me that the Thunderwolves have played top opponents all season long. They played UB's ACHA team, they beat them. They played St. Bonaventure to get to this point, they beat them. They swept Cornell, they took down Binghamton yesterday. They're not going to be afraid of the Niagara Purple Eagles, but you can bet they're gonna respect them. And on the other side, Coach Sean Casilio pretty much keeps the same message pretty consistently all year long. They hold themselves to the highest of standards to play to the best of their ability, to give their opponents the respect of giving them their best shot, and that is what they expect to receive from everybody, knowing that they had an unprecedented season last year with the success they had going to nationals in their first year. Two teams that know a lot about each other, that respect the heck out of each other, but are not about to be afraid of each other. Two teams that have met already this year as well as it was a... Uh couple of games that I don't know if you can take anything from in terms of how it will uh, impact today's result. They met in the first game of the season, that all the way back on September 30th. That was a convincing Niagara win. Obviously, though, there's been a lot of hockey and a lot of changes to both teams since that point. They met again just recently. It was a, uh, a game that was played on February 10th, but it was a game that didn't have much impact on the standings. Both teams were already locked into their playoff position. Niagara was going to be the one seed in the division, and Triple C was going to be the two seed in the division. A lot of their players, a lot of their best players didn't play in that game, so maybe this third matchup where Niagara County Community College doesn't have a win against Niagara yet this year, maybe though that's not necessarily the uh, two losses as a daunting obstacle here as the opponent has beaten them twice because you can almost throw away those two results, yeah. at least if you're looking looking at it from the Thunderwolves' perspective. Yeah, because has NU beaten this Niagara Community College Thunderwolves team yet? We don't know yet. Does not matter. NU is as daunting as opponent as they come, but they're up against a very scrappy opponent and also an opponent that wants no part of being referred to as a Cinderella story. They are not surprised that they are here. They know that they deserve to be here. They expected to be here. They expect this chance. They're not surprised at all. They're happy for the opportunity, because who wouldn't be? But they're not just going to be like, oh, look how great this was. Their goal is to win this game, because here's one difference between the two teams. This will not be NU's last game, win or lose. It will be for the Thunderwolves. Yeah, Niagara, Com Niagara County Community College deciding early in the season that they would not be going to the CHF National Tournament. Niagara has punched their ticket. They'll be there in Philadelphia in two weeks. They'd like to add an, a, a league championship to that resume this year. Obviously, Niagara County Community College, they want to finish off their season with a win and to take home the trophy here from the Tier 1 championship. That's something this team has been doing a lot of as we are introducing our starting lineups as the Niagara County Community College Thunderwolves back-to-back -back Tier 2 championships looking to do something of a three-peat, but at the new level here, which was what their captain, Chuck Schmidl, told us on the ice at North Buffalo Rink as they were celebrating their Tier 2 championship. 
This was the goal. This was the expectation. Here they are. Meeting the starting lineups right now. Let's head down to ice level as we get ready for uh, puck drop. The national anthem coming up in the Tier 1 championship in the UNYCHL. Moments away here from Northwest Arena in Jamestown. Just about ready for puck drop here between the Purple Eagles and the Thunderwolves. Aaron, do you have any last second predictions before we get this thing dropped? This is going to be a goaltender's duel is what I'm expecting here. Josh LaSalle in net for the Niagara University Purple Eagles. He has been excellent all year long. He's been a big reason why his team has the 21-2-2 record that they, two, that they carry into this game. Josh LaSalle with a season-long goals against average of 1.49. And uh, he's got, I think, 13 of his team's wins so far this season. He has not lost a game in regulation. Meanwhile, on the other side, a bit of a newcomer for Niagara County Community College, the 6-1 netminder uh, Goodyear, who has been a big addition here in the second half of the year. Trevor Goodyear has been excellent. He was yesterday. Big reason why, why NCCC won that game in overtime. The netminder number 39, Trevor Goodyear. I expect both of these goaltenders to be on top of their games. It's going to take an excellent shot to beat either one or possibly one of those funny bounces. Absolutely, and right off the hop, though, we do get an icing by the Thunderwolves as Chucky Schmidl and Jake Thomason will lean in to take the face off here. Thomason gets possession back as the Purple Eagles will look to set up shop. Quick shot there by Kroll and a good save there by Goodyear as Chase Schmidl will send the puck to the neutral zone where Thomason will recover. Marcus Bratton going, retreating back into his own zone where he will send the puck back to Prishka who will then send it back to him. Here comes Marcus Bratton. He can absolutely jet, but Chucky Schmidl right in his pocket. Dislodges here from the puck and Jason Cucci will pick it up and send it to Chase Schmidl. Schmidl sends one a little hot off the boards. That's picked up there by Abbott. Quick shot and save there by Goodyear. If you remember, Aaron, the first time P.J. Abbott did that yesterday, he found the back of the net. No surprise that the veteran and the extremely skilled and smooth defenseman P.J. Abbott looks to pull the trigger quick in this game. In this case, though, that's the first time he's shot against NCCC goaltender Trevor Goodyear, as it was not Goodyear in net when they met most recently. Actually, neither of these goaltenders were in goal in that 5-2 Niagara win. Part of uh, why we were saying off the outset of this game that maybe that original meetings or the original two meetings can almost be thrown out the window just because some of the personnel wasn't even the same. 
Puck sent in there by NU and a good play by Eddie Jetter to squeeze his man off the puck. And here's a big, here's some help here for NU as they get some big help as Jim DiMatteo, the stud defenseman, is in the lineup for the Purple Eagles tonight. He was absent yesterday. Wasn't missed a whole lot with how well the Purple Eagles controlled the puck, but don't make no mistake, Sean Casilio and the Purple Eagles have to be thrilled to be able to add him for a championship game. Yeah, essentially just gives another defenseman on the back end for this Niagara decor as uh, they basically played one short of their normal numbers yesterday. Uh, an extra defenseman dressing, but he didn't see a whole lot of time in that game. This will be just an extra addition to the great team defense that Niagara's capable of. And Tripp looking to set up shop down low. Puck ends up in the slot, but Josh LaSalle calmly goes down on top of that puck, covers for the whistle, and we will get a face-off to the glove side of the stalwart net miner for the Purple Eagles, Josh LaSalle. Certainly a different start of the game for Niagara than it was yesterday. They were awarded a power play right at the 20-minute mark before the puck was even dropped as Cornell had a what was deemed to be a protocol violation. They didn't start their starting lineup. And they, had a road a, they, team. they had a starting lineup on paper, or at least on the tablet, I guess is probably the way that it's actually correctly to convey that here in the UNYCHL. They didn't start what they said that they were going to start, so they got a two-minute penalty because of that. They ended up taking another penalty while killing that one off that eventually led to the first Niagara goal. From there, the Purple Eagles didn't look back. Puck's heading in there by the Thunder Wolves. Rose can be knocked down by LaSalle. Here's Case Cook, a high motor player, loses an edge there, but he sends the puck up to Chad Moore. Chad Moore, long pass, sends the puck up to Ethan Kanoff. Ethan Kanoff looking for looking for Scanlon. Good defensive play right there, but the net does come off, and we will get another whistle. Yeah, just enough to tie him up there at the back door. That was uh, Thomas Dwarick doing the work there defensively. Just enough of a piece of his opponent to uh, make sure that there was no, uh, no attempt to get a good shot away. Knocks the uh, more net off its moorings in the process, so we get a face-off to the right of Goodyear. And it's going to be the face-off coming in here, taken by Luke Cross. And he takes the face-off against Matthew Stewart. Stewart wins possession, and the puck is sent backwards, picked up there by Jason Cucci. Puck sent on the low. That's Hess. Hess, if you remember, Hess made the hustle play that led to the overtime winner beating out an icing right before Caleb Lee scores. He's on the ice today. And the puck is sent back to P.J. Abbott. Abbott taking a shot just wide there. Matt Riddle, another one of the standups from yesterday with two goals, drops the puck back to the captain, Briggs. Briggs sends it in front there, but Hess in position, sends the puck out where it's picked up there by Priska. Priska skating it, gains the line, sends the puck in deep, and it's going to be played there by Trevor Goodyear. Drop back there for Jason Cucci. Jason Cucci lifts a high floating pass. Icing waved off as P.J. Abbott retreats back to his own to pick up the puck. Abbott circles it back to Prisco. Weird bounce right there, and LaSalle says, I'll not mess with that. Drops his glove over the puck, and we will get an offensive zone faceoff and a wholesale change for the Purple Eagles. Looked like Pristol wanted him to play that puck to him to uh, go up ice because there's nobody really around the uh, Niagara netminder. One of those early game decisions to slow things down, make sure that the uh, fresh units out there can't necessarily blame the Niagara netminder for that move. Thomason had won the faceoff, but he had done so incorrectly, and we will redrop this puck. It's going to be Thomason and Anthony Miller leaning in for the faceoff right here. And the puck is dropped, and NU will clear the puck through the neutral zone and into the defensive zone as Marcus Bratton is pressuring Caleb Lee big time. Lee gets the puck to Kolozny, who then has to deal with Thomason, and Caleb Lee retreats into his own end where he picks up the puck. This is what we saw in the beginning from Niagara's forecheck early against Cornell. Relentless, trying to force mistakes, but Miller will get a puck in on, oh, that was a hard shot. LaSalle, mask comes off as the straps debuckled for him. Whistle right away, wow, Miller got some pop on that shot, Aaron. Right on the button in terms of where it landed in the uh, on the lower part of the face mask of the netminder. That hel helmet came off really quickly. Good of the uh, officials to make sure they were paying attention to blow that play dead before it was a uh, further bit of a dangerous situation for the Niagara netminder. Doesn't appear to be too the worse for wear as uh, just one of those fluky plays in which the shot hits him just in that right way to knock that mask off. And uh, we get play moving again here as Niagara looks to get that stretch play right off the faceoff in their own zone. They are not, they are not even going to try to hide that that's their bread and butter off the faceoffs because it works when you have a burner like Matt Riddle. And Niagara will send the puck in deep. Puck takes a bounce there where Goodyear will play it back. Pressure again there by Zach Briggs. And it's going to be Stumpo racing with Labruto to the puck. But Labruto with that long reach will send it down. Icing is waved off. And DiMatteo will have to go back to pick up the puck for the play. 
Casual with that one with two different four checkers right in front of him. Stumpo will send the puck up there and Niagara will clear center up looking for Riddle passes just behind him. And it will be Eddie Jetter, but Riddle using that speed again. He will come down there and get the puck. Chucky Schmidl on him, but NU continues to maintain possession as they look to work the puck down low. Puck is dropped off here. That is going to be, that is Franklin. Franklin sends the puck to Brady Kanoff with a shot saved there by the paddle of Goodyear. Stumpo on the point, looks to chip it down low. Chucky Schmidl knocks the puck out of the air in a neat little play. He's gonna try to get it out, but it is kept in at the blue line. Save made there by Trevor Goodyear, and he will hold on for a faceoff. Yeah, they're gonna have to develop a little bit more in terms of the uh, shot choices that Niagara takes here in this one. Those last two ones from distance with a very clear view for Goodyear. Only about one in a million of those types of shots gonna beat this netminder but I'm sure that Niagara will look to establish a little bit more zone time and get the puck moving east and west to try to set up a little bit better scoring opportunities. Case Cook had lost the puck right there, but a nice job recovering to get the puck away from Anthony Miller. And the Thunder Wolves will look to, will look to gain some possession here. Casulo sends the puck in deep. And the Thunder Wolves were gained him, but a sick little play there by Euler to drop the puck back to Franklin, who will then send the puck in deep and head off on a change. Miscommunication there by the Thunderwolves and their goaltender. And then you will continue possession there as Brady Kinoff will send the puck down low for Chad Moore. Chad Moore cycles, nice little pass off the wall, finding Case Cook. Cook shot for the far side right into the glove of the goaltender Goodyear, and we will have a whistle. Kevin Euler was set up in front of the net there. We were just talking about trying to give uh, a little bit more of, uh, of a view or, or make things a little bit more difficult for the netminders to see those shots coming in from distance. He was there, but off to the side looking for the redirection. Again, a pretty easy save for Goodyear, the Niagara County Community College netminder. Faceoff coming up to the right of the Niagara County Community College goaltender. And again, Niagara having success on the dot, getting possession. That's big for them as Pristall will send the puck down low. Puck sent in there where it's going to be picked up there by the Thunderwolves. They will look to get the puck out of the zone and they will get it as far as center ice where Rinzak will send it in low, but Pristall again is there. He'll send it through the neutral zone. He had Chad Moore behind a defenseman, but Caleb Lee back in pursuit. Nice job on the back check there by the defenseman. Lee was the hero yesterday with the overtime game winner. Good defensive play there. It might lead to a breakaway opportunity. Oh, and that... Oh, and he falls there. There was no trip. I had a look at it. Unfortunately, the player just lost his footing right there. Matthew Stewart, he had a step, but he just, he, he might have fallen there. Pristall looking to lead the rush from the defensive end. Puck is sent in there by Scanlon, and Niagara will again look to set up shot down low. Chad Moore in support there, as well as Ethan Knopf. There's the tripping penalty. Wow. The Okay, yep. I don't know about that call. I, I can see the argument that Dwarek's making there for Niagara County Community College. Yep. Ethan Kanoff is a really strong player on his skates. He doesn't go down that easily on a pretty soft trip, but he gets the call. Early on in the game, you're more likely going to get that call, so it doesn't hurt to go to the ice. He gets the call in this case, and it's a uh, early power play opportunity for Niagara. Yeah, and I can understand the gripe with the Thunderwolves faithful. They did not love that call. I might be with them on that, but be that as it may, the Thunderwolves have to kill a penalty now. Zach Briggs will lean in on the faceoff against Anthony Miller, and Miller wins this one, and the puck, that's going to work. It's going to hit Hess, and here he goes again. Hess will outrace everybody down to the puck, but a good play there by Pristall to get it off, but Hess will not give up, and he will just pin that puck against the boards, and he'll keep it there as long as he can. And again, Hess just wreaking havoc on this Niagara University power play. Nicholas Hess killing off 30 seconds basically by himself right there. Great job by the forward for the Thunderwolves. Still a minute and a half to go on this power play and two goals this power play had in yesterday's win over Cornell. So can't even for a moment allow them that room if you're the penalty killing side here in this one. They have plenty of talent and ability as seen yesterday in the win over Cornell. Case Cook doing a nice job to flag the puck down to keep it in at the point. The puck is sent over to Euler and it's tipped away, but it's gonna find its way to Case Cook. Case Cook though, and there it is again. Anthony Miller this time doing a great job diving, leaving his feet to get the puck out. But here come the Purple Eagles again with Ethan Knopf. Takes a shot, nice heel drag, but Goodyear's flashes the leather and makes the save and we're gonna get a whistle. One minute and five seconds down on this power play. Yeah, Goodyear right up on top of his crease, cutting down that angle, not giving Knopf a whole lot to shoot at there. 
plenty of room to let that shot go, but uh, just enough cutting off that angle to put Goodyear in a good position to make the glove save. Purple Eagles looking to gain possession of this draw, and it's Jim DiMatteo that keeps the puck in at the blue line. DiMatteo sends the puck to Damon Fiera, the puck possession machine, but right there is not able to control the puck, and it's going to be sent the length of the ice. And end and, and trip again. They're going to send a four checker, Kevin Carl, this time just to add that little bit of stress in the host. What just happened? It's in the net! Oh my goodness! There was confusion in front of the net. The NU defenders cross each other's paths. Josh LaSalle obviously not expecting the puck to come on net. And the, somehow the Thunderwolves get a gift short handed for the first goal of the game. The two Niagara players try to go in, across in front of the net. It was, seemed like a pretty innocent looking play. There wasn't a Niagara player or Niagara County Community College player within 20 feet of either one of them. They got those lines crossed up though. They ran into each other in front of the net. The puck ends up squirting through the goaltender LaSalle and it's a one nothing Niagara County Community College lead in a strange shorthanded goal too to add to it. Some may refer to that as justice depending on what side of that call you were on. But be that as it may, the first goal of the game is about as weird a goal as you're going to see. But ask, and ask the Thunderwolves if they're going to apologize for it. They'll take it. And it's going to be Caleb Lee, the hero from last night, that gets credit for the goal as that shot is steered away there by Trevor Goodyear. Just so nine seconds to go on the power play now. And uh, not only have they almost killed off the entire two minutes, but it's a power kill as well as they have the fluky, weird, shorthanded goal. Thunderwolves with the uh, one nothing lead, but still a little bit of time to kill off on this penalty. And you looking to set up shop right there. Shot blocked as we picked up there by Jason Cucci. Little difficulty firing it out right there, but it's sent out to neutralize as we have returned to even strength. Abbott sending a cross ice pass, doesn't reach his intended target. Jason Cucci will pick it up below his goal line and Casulo will get the puck up to Caleb Lee, who then will send it up to Gavin Cirillo, gets it over the line, but Matt Riddle picks up the puck and sends the pass over to, and it's gonna be NU breaking out again as Zach Briggs fires a hard shot in deep as the Eagles will change. That puck is coming towards the bench. Watch out for too many men. Ah, uh, yep, a lot of people had that same idea, but here comes Marcus Bratton with speed. Bratton steps across, fires just wide of the short side. Puck picked up there by Brady Kanoff. Brady Kanoff sending it down low to Thomason. Thomason working down low, gets the puck over to Marcus Bratton, sends one to the front of the net, rebound cleaned up and sent to the point, held in there by Wojciechowski, who fires and he scores! First goal yesterday from the blue line, first goal today from the blue line. Aiden Wojciechowski picks up the puck, fires a wrist shot, doinks it off both bars and in, has a few words for the end trip bench, but we are tied and NU responds almost immediately. A huge response and a pinpoint shot from Aiden Wojciechowski off the near post, across and inside the far post and then out. It's a 1-1 hockey game, just like yesterday. Goals from the blue line from Niagara sparking their offense and it's now a 1-1 hockey game. This uh, game is delivering not even nine minutes in. We've already got some excitement and some uh, funny bounces. Pass in front of that from the Bruto to Chase Smittle tip just wide here. Here come the here come the Purple Eagles. Puck is sent in deep right there. That is sent in there by Matthew Kroll. Puck is picked up right there by Eddie Jetter. Jetter looking for the long pass, looking for Joe Labruto just wide of him, but there will be no icing. Stumpo shrugs off Labruto, gets the puck away from Chucky Schmidl, and then you looking for the breakout. Here comes Damon Fiera, they have numbers. Damon Fiera with the puck in his skates, looks for the cross ice pass. He was looking for Jim DiMatteo, puck doesn't get to him. And you looking to respond, here comes Joe Labruto. Labruto hits the brakes, looks for a trailer though, but like we saw all day yesterday, that team defense, most notably the back check, everyone's in there, but again, going to the front of the net, and this time LaSalle closes the pads and keeps the puck out of the net. Long shot there by Spencer Rinzek, gets over his stick, and here's a breakout for Kevin Euler. Euler walking in, goes to the forehand, big save there by Goodyear, and a good back check there by the Thunderwolves. Euler back to his feet after spilling into the boards. Two big defensive plays on this shift for Jason Cucci, the alternate captain who's now heading back to pick up this loose puck behind his net. Both rushes up the ice for Niagara on this shift. It's been uh, Cucci that had to do some work to make sure that uh, 
he denied the offensive zone opportunity for the Purple Eagles. Spencer Rinzak backhands one in on goal. That is gloved down by Josh LaSalle, and we will get a faceoff coming up in the Purple Eagles defensive zone. Going to be to the uh, glove hand side of LaSalle, and uh, you saw Niagara County Community College throw the puck in front of the net again here in the last minute, as uh, that was the exact way that that first goal was scored. They're basically trying to make sure that the uh, netminder is on top of things right now, even though some of those weird bounces might be in his head a little bit after that first goal. So we see whether or not that's going to be a strategy for end trip as they move forward. Face off one there by the Purple Eagles, and it's Pristall that will pick up the puck behind his own net, and he airmails that pass, and we're going to have to do the face off over again as we will get another icing. About 10 minutes into the action here, a little bit more than that as uh, a goal from each side here in the Tier 1 championship game. Been an uh, exciting start so far to, here in the beginning as it's a shorthanded goal for Niagara County Community College and then the even strength equalizer, Aiden Wojciechowski scoring for Niagara. Caleb Lee shot from the point, that's blocked by Logan Scanlon, but it's going to be chased down there by Stewart. Stewart looks to send the puck down low. Abbott will get it off the boards to the blue line to Ethan Kanoff, where the breakout pass will be received by Chad Moore. Moore takes a hard snapshot from the blue line in that tough spot there under the goaltender's arms, but the goaltender Goodyear makes the save right here, and we will get a whistle here. So getting a few faceoffs here coming back and forth, but it's not for lack of play. It's goaltenders covering the puck, knowing that if they try to play it, they're going to be, fight, they're going to be playing with fire right here. Yeah, good you're making uh, the stop there and covering up to make sure that there was no second chance as we uh, are under nine and a half to go here in first period play. Good pushes into the offensive zone for both teams here in the last few minutes, but uh, neither team really uh, establishing that momentum in the game overall. Not quite yet. After both teams got their goals, it's been a bit of a stagnant pace here as Case Cook will send the puck far side and down below the goal line. Eddie Jetter will send the puck up where it's sent right back to the same spot by Case Cook where Eddie Jetter will try again. There's that overload sort of forecheck that NU sets up where they force you to one side for you to do this and they get possession right back again. Puck picked up there by Matt Riddle. Riddle will get on his edges and he will look to skate it out again. We saw him do this a bunch yesterday and he's got the puck again. He will send the puck down low where it's going to be picked up there by Jetter. Jetter will send the puck over to Dwarak where it's going to be sent up all the way through and Miller will just skate around his down teammate, sending the puck in low where Case Cook will receive it, and then it will be sent up to Riddle. Riddle sends it to Cross, and Cross looks for Zach Briggs. Passed just a hair too far for him, and Jason Cucci will send the puck up to Miller, who will then chip it ahead to Kolesny, but Marcus Bratton picks it up in the neutral zone. But again, teams are really good at picking the puck up in the neutral zone, but they're getting the puck knocked off their stick just as quickly as it's coming on there. Cucci again sending a pass up, looking to start something here. Puck is fired in on LaSalle. He will play it for Brady Kanoff, who will then send it up to Marcus Bratton. Bratton, light little pass up, caught night neatly there, and here comes Cross. Takes the shot and it's saved right there. Excuse me, Kroll. Kroll with the shot and it's saved right there by Goodyear. Marcus Bratton sends one. Weird little bounce right there. Blocker away there by Goodyear. Puck is sent to center ice where Jacob Pristall will recover. Pristall fans on his D to D pass, but gets enough on it where Brady Kanoff can send it down, where Kolesny will retrieve the puck that is sent down into the Thunderwolf zone. Kolesny will send the puck down to Anthony Janot, and Janot is squeezed out nicely there by Kroll. Kroll picks up the puck, takes a wrist shot, deflected right at the last second wide. Pristall turns the puck and spins it around deep where it's picked up there by Franklin. Franklin sends the puck to the point to Pristall. A little trouble in his feet right there, but gets it back to the half wall where Franklin will drop it to Pristall. Wrist shot, saved there by Goodyear. Rebound cleared away, sent the length of the ice. This will be icing, and we will have a faceoff coming up in the Thunderwolf zone. A little bit of a push here in the last uh, few moments from Niagara as they're starting to establish just a little bit of control here in this game. Still the 1-1 score, though, as uh, Trevor Goodyear doing a good job of maintaining his crease. Just that one seeing-eye point shot that went in off the post is the one that's gotten past him so far. Faceoff coming up to the left of Goodyear, and the faceoff is won there by Franklin, but the pass by Euler was just inside of Kanoff, and the Purple Eagles will need to retreat. Brady Kanoff sends the puck in down low where Franklin will look to keep possession, but it gets to the point man and is held in there by Stumpo. Stumpo looking to send the puck up to Quintern, but, he, but it's taken away by Quintern and sent down, and Stumpo will retrieve the puck. 
Nice speed up for Kevin Euler, who looks now for Damon Fiera. Damon Fiera gains the blue line. Nice move to get around Joe Labruto. Uh, but Cucci then recovers nicely to get the puck back to the aforementioned Labruto to the captain, Chucky Schmidl, who will gain center ice, and he will send the puck in deep. LaSalle will play it to Brady Kanoff. Brady Kanoff will chip the puck past Labruto, and here comes Logan Scanlon sending the puck up to Euler. Euler looking to go through two guys, drops it to Logan Scanlon, shoots for the high shot, but it goes just wider than that. Abbott doing a nice job on the pinch to keep the puck in at the blue line to Chad Moore. Chad Moore loses the puck to Chucky Schmidl, and Schmidl will reverse ice and send it up the walls to his brother Chase, who will then look to flip it out, but PJ Abbott's right there, fires a long shot in from the neutral zone. Goodyear not to take any chances, will hold on for the faceoff. These are just two teams that play excellent team defense, and you saw that yesterday in the semifinal wins by both sides. You see it again here as uh, NCCC having to play a little bit more time in their zone here in this game here in the first period than N NU has, but still Niagara County Community College keeping the playoff to the perimeter, not allowing NU any of those real high danger chances, allowing Goodyear to make those stops from the perimeter. Spencer Rinzak with the puck looking to break it out there, sends it up but it's kept in there. It's kept at the line by Ethan Knopf. Still, just it's just a war of attrition right now. Like Both teams are committed to team defense and are doing a great job of this and making life very difficult for the offense on both sides. Man taken down there by Logan Scanlon, and Caleb Lee will pick up in his own end, and he will send the puck up to his D partner, and Matthew Stewart will look to skate the puck out, sending it in to Josh LaSalle. Abbott gets down there first, shrugs off a hit right there, and NU will look to break it out here. The puck is, gets as far as Chad Moore, and he will skate out to a two-on-one. Chad Moore coming with Briggs. Briggs holds it, sends it back to Moore, and they score! Two-on-one, worked beautifully right there by Zach Briggs and Chad Moore. Moore to Briggs, Briggs looks like he's gonna shoot it. Sends it to Moore, the goaltender gets there in time initially, but the puck jumps up and finds the goal line and across. And Chad Moore gives the Purple Eagles a 2-1 to one lead. Yeah, it almost looked like uh, Niagara had the coverage on the back check as it was Rinzak making that extra effort to get back in the, in the defensive zone. He ended up looking for that pass out towards the mid slot as opposed to the low slot. Ended up coming back across the crease and then ended up uh, put in by Moore as it's now a 2-1 lead in favor of the Purple Eagles. Puck picked up by Matt Riddle, and here he comes. Riddle with speed, nice move inside, outside. Puck is in the crease. Good job to clear that by Eddie Jetter. Matt Riddle again sends the puck across, looking for Zach Briggs. Good play there, though, on, the, on defense by Thomas Dwarak. Dwarak tying up his man, and he's got Riddle tied up right there, and the puck is picked up there by Entrip, and they will look to counter. Here is Hess. Hess fires one on net, easily blockered away there by the goaltender, LaSalle. Here's Anthony Miller, but he's got a defender on him. Oh, reverse hip check right there. That was pretty nice. And the puck is sent out right there where Jason Cucci will pick it up just past center ice. Might have been a little stick involved in that uh, reverse check as Cross was heading to the bench, giving the uh, official an, a, an earful about what he thought was a penalty. Obviously not going to be able to lobby and get that call in the aftermath, but a long stretch pass connected on here in the neutral zone, and here come the Purple Eagles. Here's Jake Thomas in with Cucci on him. Nice shimmy step to get around him, fires and scores! Jake Thomason puts on the edge work, loses the defender, pops out from behind, looks like he's gonna go to the point, turns around and fires one short side, and the blink of an eye, three from the Purple Eagles, this one is Jake Thomason. Thomason was the one up ice collecting that stretch pass, got it deep in the offensive zone, even though that long pass into the neutral zone didn't spring him on any sort of rush, circles the net, Beats the netminder short side. It's 3-1 in favor of the Purple Eagles. They have a two-goal lead in this one, and we saw yesterday how dangerous they are with a lead. They're a tough team to come back against because of how well they play defensively, and they have the defenseman number two, Jim DiMatteo, back in the lineup today. That makes them even better in their own end of the ice. Yeah, this is exactly what NU wants right here. You know, theoretically, all four goals have come off NU sticks and skates, uh, but... What a way to respond to a goal that a lot of teams would have had their psyches fractured from, and now they're just gonna go. Here comes Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle is as a play driver as you've ever seen, and he will send the puck in deep. Caleb Lee, last night's hero, will send the puck up looking for Chuck Schmidl. That's a little behind him, and Kevin Euler will send it back the other way. Here comes Franklin. 
Franklin looking to send it to the front. Nobody there holds on to it. Damon Fiera doing a nice job on the wall. He is an absolute monster with the puck. He's very hard to dislodge. But if anyone's going to do it, that guy, Chucky Schmidt, is the one, the one that will come through here. Good move there by penalty Rinzak, up, and he yep. draws a penalty on the interference, and this is what the Thunderwolves need to maybe get some of that momentum back as Spencer Rinzak, he was a factor yesterday. He comes through again today, sacrificing his body, and they get P.J. Abbott off the ice in the process. A bit of a double win right there for the Thunderwolves. Yeah, but with the depth of the Niagara defense, getting one defenseman off the ice almost doesn't matter because they can send five different guys back out there and be just as effective. Actually, go ahead and say they could send six guys out there and be just effective with seven defensemen dressed here this afternoon. So I wouldn't necessarily worry about their numbers on the back end, but they still have to kill this uh, penalty here with uh, NCCC looking to obviously take advantage here, trailing by two with under three minutes to go in the first. Pristall goes to the wall with Chucky Schmidl. Schmidl gets the puck off him, and NTRIP will look to get started here. Cucci will start from his point. He sends the puck over to Rinzak who gets it to Caleb Lee with a hard shot and don't think NU is not aware of what he did yesterday. They're gonna be aware of that shot from the point from number nine all game. But that shot's gonna need to come quicker in on goal if you're changing directions and moving from one side of the ice to the other one, that needs to be a quicker shot. A goaltender as quick as Josh LaSalle, he's gonna get over and get himself square to that shot like he did there. And he, in that case, was so square and in the right position, there was no chance for a secondary opportunity for the Thunderwolves. And you wins the face off, but it hits just the wrong stanchion of the glass, and it goes out of play, and we will get a new, where's this face off gonna be? Defensive zone. Yeah, the clearing attempt ends up in the bench, so uh, redo that face off from the same dot to the glove side of LaSalle with a minute 36 to go in the power play. Schmidt will lean in to take the face off here against Logan Scanlon. Face off warning there. And now NU, on the second try, gets it cleared. Puck is flagged down there by Goodyear, and Spencer Rinzak will pick up the puck, and they will start the power play again. So a relatively new rule being enforced there as uh, NCCC was given the face-off violation warning. You saw Schmidl then being very careful about that second draw. If he got a second violation, that's a penalty. Obviously, he didn't want to take that. Niagara ends up with the clear. Scanlon scores! Right off the faceoff, it's Ethan Knopf and Logan Scanlon. Knopf feathers one on a platter for Scanlon. Walks in, has all day. Logan Scanlon's not gonna miss from there. He buries one, and NU is looking to kick this thing open right now as they return the favor and get a shorthanded goal of their own. Might be time for a timeout if you're in Triple C right here. This is uh, this has the makings of getting away from the Thunderwolves. Quick. Still two minutes and 14 seconds left to go in this period. That's a shorthanded goal to add to the three already scored here in the first period by Niagara. They have a commanding three goal lead. Every bit of momentum in this hockey game. And NCCC uh, is gonna have to do something just to get back with their feet back under them here in this game. They're in danger of getting run out of the building at this point. Jatter sends a pass up and he spends it up high and here come the Thunderwolves. But again, as that lead grows, the Thunder will, excuse me, as this lead grows, the Purple Eagles will just play more suffocating defense right now. And that's what Entrip has to deal with right now. Jetter holds the puck right here looking for the breakout. He will send the puck up to Casulo. Casulo, it's a little far for him and the puck's coming all the way back down. We saw this with Cornell. They had difficulty just breaking out. And it, that long pass is just simply not gonna be there all night. And even when you get a stick on it, Three defenders back. Pristal has all the time, and he will float it down. And again, the Purple Eagles just doing exactly what you want to do on this penalty kill. Still uh -huh. 10 seconds to go in this uh, in this power play, but uh, this one hasn't gone any way that Entrips wanted it to. They uh, gave up the shorthanded goal, and now they're stuck in their own zone as the power play expires. Jetter looking to reverse ice as we return to even strength, and he sends a long pass, and once again, that long pass is deflected. We will not get icing, but we will get Purple Eagle possession. And looks like NU might get a break. No, icing's waved off, so it's basically the same circumstance. Caleb Lee goes back into his own end to retrieve the puck. Brady Knopf having a little difficulty controlling it. He recovers, sends it off the glass, and it's out into the neutral zone with 37 seconds to go in this first period. Janot sends one in on LaSalle. He will glove that down with little to no difficulty, and we will get a face-off with 31 seconds to go in the first period. Yeah, 
last 30 seconds to go in a period that's gone exactly how the Niagara University Purple Eagles had to imagine with one little hiccup there early on. It didn't seem to slow their stride down one bit. That fluky goal that Entrip got to lead the game off, a shorthanded goal that ended up going off of three different Niagara players before it went in. The uh, fluky bounce going against NU. They didn't let that bother them one bit, though, as they got the next four goals here in this game. And they have every bit of momentum as we near the end of period number one. If anything, that goal might have been the might have been a wake-up call, like, hey, focus, and because they came right out gunning, and holy, have they just taken over in this first period, and they're looking for more. The captain Briggs dealing with some physical play by Jason Cucci. He's got some support right there by Matt Riddle, and that will do it for the first period as after... A weird goal to say the very least by NU. They come out and score four of their own and NU comes out and just lands a haymaker to start this game, taking a 4-1 lead into the locker room. Well, this is a, uh, a period of play that Niagara had to have exactly scripted here as they came out and uh, did exactly what they wanted to do in the first 20 minutes here of this game. As a result, they have a very deserving 4-1 lead and this is going to be tough to come back on for NCCC as we saw yesterday once Niagara established the lead against Cornell. They actually got better as the game went on. They sagged a little bit back into the neutral zone. They ended up creating plenty of offense that way as well. This is a tough team to erase a deficit against just because they play such disciplined team defense. Yeah, and like you said, Aaron, they're going to play great defense. They get better as the lead grows. And defensively, they're looking exactly like they did against Cornell. Uh, so Cinder the Cinderella story has one last mountain to climb if they're going to complete the task here. If any team's going to do it, it's going to be them. They face this all year. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what adjustments are made by the Thunderwolves. Before we head to break, we, have, we would like to acknowledge our sponsors as our coverage is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility, simulators, lessons, leagues. Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. With a great selection of beer and wine, it makes this the perfect place to sit and watch golf with others who love the game. With locations in downtown Buffalo and Orchard Park, book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. This broadcast is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty Visit them at 716-856-2872 or at militello.com. By Wester, the largest automotive dealer group in the state of New York, selling over 50,000 used and new automobiles to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. Wester Auto, dedicated to absolute excellence in customer service. By the Battaglia Marciano Agency, an independent agent for auto, homeowners, commercial, and life insurance. The Battaglia Marciano Agency, providing peace of mind for Western New Yorkers for over 35 years. Get a quote from them at 716-675-5700. By Envious Gameware, designers of custom high-end hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel. The thinking of look good, feel good, play good goes into every Envious jersey design. Find them at enviousgameware.com to get your team a look to be envious of. And finally, by 412 Communications, the, gold stand, the new gold standard in digital media solutions. Offering consultations for web and graphic design, social media, writing and editing services, multimedia solutions, and so much more. Visit them at 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. We're going to step away here after the first intermission, and we will be back for second period coverage here on the Nickel City Hockey Network. Be back in a few.
There's benefits to practicing both indoors and outdoors, but one of the great things about practicing indoors here, with the technology we have, that golf ball, whatever it's doing in here, is exactly what it's doing outside. So using it here allows you the opportunity to change, to play around with your numbers, to see what fits you best and how your eye sees the golf shot, and able to then allow you to have the repetition to do it on the course under pressure, time in and time out. I think one of the best things about having an instructor that you could rely on is you have someone to bounce ideas off of and sometimes they're there just to remind you that one thing you could have forgot about from a few lessons ago. An instructor's job is to also help keep you on track with the end game or the end goal, I should say, in sight and slowly but surely getting to that point. I like to empower you to understand everything that's going on so that when I'm not with you or you are on the golf course, you can know exactly why you had that miss hit and be able to then fix it immediately and enjoy the rest of your round, keep your round under control and continue progressing forward. Bridges have connected people for centuries. When it comes to helping small businesses build bridges with the people they serve, there's a new gold standard. 412 Communications offers a uniquely comprehensive array of media solutions to help your brand establish and maintain strong, lasting connections with your clientele. And welcome back inside Northwest Arena in Jamestown, New York, where we are just about to get second period play underway. 
Uh, thank you very much for joining our broadcast today as live coverage of the Upstate New York Collegiate Hockey League on Nickel City Hockey Network is brought to you, is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Buffalo's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. It was a fluky goal to say the very least that got things started for us, Aaron, but NU decided to think better of getting upset about it and decided to just take the entire period over. That's exactly what they did, and then some. Yeah, you have to give a lot of credit to the uh, group here in white and purple, the Niagara University Purple Eagles. The goal they gave up early in this game was the type of goal that can get a team starting to ask questions and to start doubting what they're doing in the game. It was a uh, sloppy play on the power play. They were trying to get the breakout going. For some reason, they decided to take the puck in front of the net. Two players ran into each other. The puck ended up in the back of the net. And Triple C had the one nothing lead, but it was uh, not something that threw NU off the course at all here in this game. Anything. All they did was uh, essentially just kind of put the nose to the grindstone from that point on. They scored the next four goals. They have a three-goal lead heading into second period play. And as we saw yesterday in Niagara University's dominant win over the Cornell Big Red, once they got the lead, they played their defensive structure to force you into mistakes and to frustrate you beyond belief. The lead is bigger now than it was then. The game means more now. I expect a lot of that same defense, that team defense still leading to offense because then you will not neglect offense. I expect that, and I expect to see some attempted adjustment from Coach Drew Harris to try and break that and try and get something going on the offensive side of the puck here. Very interesting to see what we got going into the second period. It's a huge period for both teams. 16-8 were the shots on goal in the first period in favor of Niagara. First goal credited to Caleb Lee from Niagara County Community College on that fluky shorthanded goal. It was Aiden Wojciechowski, though, tying things up at the 11:28 mark. Assists going to Marcus Bratton, Matthew Kroll. Chad Moore gave Niagara the lead. Assists going to Zach Briggs and P.J. Abbott. Logan Scanlon made it 3-1 with the assist going to Ethan Knopf, then Jake Thomason with the fourth goal. Assist to Jim DiMatteo and Marcus Bratton as it is a 4-1 lead as we start second period play. The Purple Eagles two periods away from having a, uh, an opportunity to lift a trophy. And Chuck Schmidt will send the puck up there looking for Spencer Rinzak a little bit ahead of him. And NU will look to gain it as Jake Thomason comes down the wing. Thomason takes a shot, rebound in front. What a save there by Goodyear. That would have been about as close to a dagger as you're going to see. And Goodyear sticks with it and keeps his team within striking distance. And it's going to lead to numbers here. It's a two on two is a good back check there by Franklin. Spencer Rinzek walks a crossover, and PJ Abbott gets a stick on that and pushes it away. Penalty. And we got a penalty. Hooking call. We got a hooking call coming up, and that is exactly what. That is exactly what the Purple e excuse me, what the Thunderwolves need right here. A chance on the power play to get some momentum back. They will go to work early, just 46 seconds into this second period. The Thunderwolves get an opportunity on a power play to close this gap a little bit. Jake Franklin taking the hooking call there as uh, it seemed like Niagara was about to make it a 5-1 game. Great save by Goodyear as he sprawled across to make that save. Had a Niagara player on the ice was starting to celebrate the goal before he, before the save was made. Obviously thinking that he had a sure thing there, but uh, great save by Goodyear to keep his team in it. Now they get the power play opportunity. Kolozny takes a shot, and I don't know if that got deflected if it was saved by LaSalle. Looks like it might have hit him in the shoulder. Puck goes out of play, and we're going to get another faceoff coming up in the NU Purple Eagles zone here. And Aaron, you got it. This is as close to a must score as you're ever going to get for a power play, I would imagine, right? Uh, at this point in the game, you have to at least have momentum coming out of this power play and some life in the offensive zone. This is certainly not a, uh, a man advantage opportunity that they want to let go by the wayside as it's uh, going to be a long road to climb if they have a three-goal deficit for too much longer here in this game. Kolozny will receive the pass, and he will gain the line. Kolozny slows up, and he will look to send it down low, and P.J. Abbott will retrieve that puck. Good pinch there, though, by Caleb Lee. But Abbott just strong on his feet right there, just out-muscles everybody and sends the puck out to center ice, and N-Trip will need to recover. Miller and Kolozny kind of get their lines crossed at the blue line. They are now offsides, and now Stumpo is going to get all kinds of time to just sit on that puck. He will send it the length of the ice as NU has 
relatively easily killed off the first half of this power play. And here comes the four check as Zach Briggs creates possession right here. And now it's going to be crossed down low. Keep away to mean, kill the penalty. I mean, this is exactly to a T. I mean, takes four guys to get the puck away from him. They still don't have it yet. There's a shot while he's down. Still, I mean, the puck's still not free. And Tripp might take a penalty here if this keeps going for too long. What a play by Luke Cross. He got abused right there. And now he's going to go back in there and continue on the pressure. Luke Cross, I mean, man, he's going to have some more. Oh, and there he is again. I mean, he falls down, but he breaks up a pass. Goalie clear. Little Linus Allmark attempt right there, even though he's not trying to score anywhere near the net. Still cool to see goaltenders launch the puck the length of the ice. And here comes Jason Cucci. He's looking to hit ahead of steam right there. He gains the line and drops a pass off to Labruto. Not able to handle that as Brady Kanoff will turn around and fire it up. Good keep in there by Cucci right there. And out of the box comes Bratton. And we got numbers. Franklin coming in over the line, finds Bratton. Okay, nothing there. And N Trip will look to counter with Joe Labruto. Joe Labruto has PJ Abbott on him. Abbott. And hit. those are two big guys right there. That's going to be a battle right there. And Brady Knopf will come out of there with the puck. He will send the puck up to Thomason, who Damon Fiera then joins them. Look at this. Just There's just puck support everywhere for the Purple Eagles. Damon Fiera looks to send it. Thomason shot and another good save there by Goodyear. But Aaron, the team concept of attacking the puck in all three zones apparent with NU, they're not gonna get away from that, nor should they. And certainly uh, gaining more confidence in how they play the game as it continues here. This group's gonna stay out there. Franklin, uh, Euler, and Thiera, they had a uh, great push into the offensive zone. It looked like they were gonna set up a real good scoring chance. It was Goodyear making the stop to deny it, but they again have it set up in possession in the offensive zone, almost getting that redirection shot in on goal. Damon Fiera down low, puts on the brakes, and he will continue to possess the puck. Sends the puck to Franklin. Franklin gets the puck knocked off his stick, but Euler's there to recover. And Tripp gains possession momentarily, but they can't get it out as it hits Casulo in the back. Now the puck will come past the line, and the Purple Eagles will send the puck back in, and they will tag up and get some fresh legs on the ice with the long change. Long pass, almost had it there, but a good defensive play there by Pristal. Puck sent inwards, picked up there by Eddie Jetter. Jetter will bounce it off the wall, and Janot will then tap it, but Euler picks it right back up, and will look for his point man. Comes right out there to, to Case, to Case Cook. Nice athletic play there by Jetter to flag it down, but the puck's not gonna get anywhere. The was deflected. There will be no icing, but Case Cook will maintain possession down below his own net and look to break it out. Long saucer pass caught there by Scanlon. He will go D to D to hit Ethan Kanoff. Kanoff will gain the line. Nice move inside out. Goes to the front of the net. Just wide there. Ethan Kanoff showing off the slick mitts right there to create a scoring chance. Yeah, just uh, barely missing that far post after making the move to get to the front of the net. Looked like there was enough of a crowd of yellow jerseys there to deny him the net front presence, but ended up creating a chance. There's another one at the doorstep. Puck to the point where Demario winds and fires. Gets through the goaltender Goodyear. And there's the addition showing up, paying dividends as Jim DiMatteo with a slap shot skimmer finds the five hole and the Purple Eagles take a 5-1 lead. Yeah, that one was uh, look, another one that looked like it might have hit something again in front of the net, but just uh, enough to change directions and sneak inside that near post as uh, Jim DiMatteo gets the goal with the screen in front, perfectly placed shot along the ice. It's now a 5-1 Niagara lead, they are in Cruise control right now with the four goal lead here five minutes into the second period. LaSalle plays the puck back, which can be picked up there by Aiden Wojciechowski, who got the first NU goal. Wojciechowski sends the puck up to Briggs, a little too far for him. It's spun back into the zone there by Schmidl, and Spencer Rinzak will look to chase it down. Rinzak doing some good work down low on the four check, and he will circle around. He's going to send the puck to Caleb Lee. Lee sends a long shot there. That's blocked by Cross. Schmidl with a shot right there, and a nice glove save there by Josh LaSalle to keep it a 5-1 score for the Purple Eagles. I don't know if there are going to be many better opportunities than that one right there for NCCC as he, uh, one of the most dangerous players in yellow had the puck alone in the slot, had uh, about three feet on either side before there was an opposing player. Enough time to get that shot away, but LaSalle a good step out in front of his crease, cutting off that angle and making a great glove save. Schmidl and Thomason to lean in on the faceoff here before we get our bearings settled here. 
And again, like Aaron said, you, LaSalle's the toughest goal, one of the toughest goalies around to beat. And if you can't beat him on that, when can you get him again? Glove and no rebound. LaSalle is dialed in right now, and he's got a four goal lead. Apparently the answer is the only way you can beat him is to have it hit off at two different skates and then maybe part of his equipment before it sneaks in when he's not expecting it. So far, that appears to be the only way that one's gonna get by him here in this game. He only gave up one yesterday and it was pretty much after the game was mostly decided, if and I recall. It was an absolutely absurd tip where he wouldn't, I don't know if any NHL goaltender makes the save on a tip that perfect, so that's what it takes. Either his own team or an accident. So, an accident. And Tripp's gonna have to find something here in order to come in and come back in this game. 14.33 to go in the second period. Still plenty of time left, but they're gonna have to ch stem the tide here as Niagara has all the momentum in the world right now. And there is a whistle, and yet they're gonna, that play is going to go outside the zone here. Two penalties. He's given penalties to each side of the, as there was a little battle in front of the net. Rinzek and Abbott going to the penalty box from each side. Going to be four on four. And that doesn't do much for Entrip as they need advantages here. And now they're going to give this extreme. Granted, Entrip is a very fast team in their own right, but you just don't want to give more ice to these Purple Eagles because their entire offensive philosophy is built on speed. Plenty of uh, offensive ability out there on the ice as both teams get their uh, four players set. Actually, it appears that Niagara didn't make their change quick enough, so they're not going to be allowed the uh, change in their forward unit. And now it's a complete mess with five different skaters out there. Finally, one coming off. Niagara now has their proper four out there for this defensive zone draw. And it will be Thomason to take the face off against. Uh, that will be I Miller. Miller, thank you. I couldn't tell. That was a three or a nine. Coot Coochie keeps the puck in and a shot and a save there by LaSalle and that's the first time he's allowed a rebound and it's been covered so. It was a half a rebound at the most. It wasn't out far enough for anybody to get to it. Plus there was no real traffic in front right after the faceoff. Yeah, that was the first time, that's the first time I can remember a clean save touching the ice. But again, Entrip is taking the 1999 Dallas Stars approach on Dominic Hasek. Fire from everywhere, something will bounce in. And with a goalie like LaSalle, I don't know what else you can possibly do. Stumpo will look to play the puck there. He's got two Thunderwolves on him, though, but Stumpo's going to come out of there for now. Jetter pinching down low will keep possession, though, for the Thunderwolves. Mm. Looking to send it in front. Had a man for a second. Pass was just off. And another shot from distance. Seen all the way there by Josh LaSalle, and he will cover for a faceoff. He had to adjust his position a little bit there as he was at the right-hand side out towards the top of the crease, then adjusted towards the middle. Made a pretty... Uh, what I think is a difficult save. I'm not a goaltending expert by any stretch of the imagination. That one didn't look like an easy save, but it made, he made it look somewhat routine. He has a habit of doing that, making saves that are far from easy, look like something anybody who puts on pads can do. That's what the good ones, that's how the good ones play here. And here's a breakout by and by and you and Chad Moore. Nice move. Gets around. What a move! And Chad Moore showing the hands and the skill. Moore. Catches the hard pass, steps around the defender, puts it through him, dinks the goaltender, shows that patience. 6-1, Purple Eagles. This one's starting to get away from Niagara County Community College as uh, the play in transition by Moore. He made a great move just inside the end trip blue line, got around the defenseman, got himself that lane in towards the net, and then a pretty finish going from the backhand to the forehand and getting wide around the netminder putting it home and giving his team now a five goal lead. This one might be a coronation of the new UNY CHL champions. Don't want to necessarily give Niagara the title quite yet, but they're well on their way there. I mean, they're doing everything right. And as we saw, they're not going to slough off. They are not going to give anybody a chance to get back into this game. Like they say, their standard is expect the best and provide your best. I don't expect and you to stop giving their best now of all times. I feel like the pedal is going to stay to the metal here. Offsides call at the blue line as uh, 13 minutes and change remaining in the second period. Still going to continue with four on four play as uh, 50 seconds remaining on those two penalties. Clearly, at least in the first part of this four on four, it's gone uh, the, towards the Niagara advantage. That extra bit of ice maybe played a little bit of a factor in Moore's goal. Definitely could have gave him room to just show that unbelievable skill he has. As we know, he's also an incredibly accomplished roller hockey player. No surprise to see the slick mitts here by Chad Moore. Labruto sending one in front of the net just wide there of Miller. Labruto looking to gain possession. 
Good stick there. Sticks are flying everywhere. But the Purple Eagles coming out with numbers led by Pristal. Pristal drops it back. Sent over to Franklin. And he scores! Tick, tack, toe. And the open ice again. Proving advantageous for the Purple Eagles. Pristal sends the pass down. A quick snapper over to Franklin who buries it in the open net. And the Purple Eagles, not even halfway through the game, they put up a touchdown. And there was a penalty after the play. Yeah, Niagara takes a penalty, at, or Niagara County Community College takes a penalty as well, adding insult to injury here in this case. As uh, NCCC had the numbers back, they had the three on three set up in the defensive zone. They just couldn't maintain the coverage. The pass comes across, and uh, Franklin buries it on the forehand. 7 1 is the lead. And uh, that one might be uh, the nail in the coffin. We're not even halfway through the game yet, and Niagara has almost an insurmountable lead uh, set up here in this game. Yeah, six goal lead is just yeah. That's that's wow. I don't even know. I don't know what to say. I wasn't prepared for this this early in the game. But having said that, um, and you looking to break it out here, but they're going to get a power play out of this. It's not a power play. It was a ten minute misconduct oh, okay. that was given up given out after the goal to Miller. So. He'll sit until somewhere around the two minute mark until he's released for what I believe is a 10 minute misconduct. I'm uh, about 95% certain about that. I don't know so, what else it could be. I mean, yeah, back to five on five play, but it's a uh, tall mountain to climb here now as it's a six goal lead for Niagara. Demadio will send the puck around his own net looking for Luke Cross. He gets run from behind. That's going to be a frustration penalty. And this is not what you want to start seeing if you're end trip. That saw, the arm was halfway up before they even made contact on that hit from behind. And now NU's going to go back to the power play. And these teams have played physical games in the past. Their two previous affairs this season were both physical games. So uh, this is one of those uh, situations where Hey, hey, we're, yeah, we're getting two penalties called here. That it's not just the uh, initial, original call to Janot, but retaliation. apparently the retaliation by Stumpo is getting called as well. Refs aren't playing around here, Aaron. They don't want to have anything to do with the outcome of this game. So if there's two involved, two are going right here. This is smart too, based on the history between these two teams. I don't think there's a lot of love lost between either side here towards the other one. And uh, this is a smart move by the officials to try to put a pin in anything that could be starting to boil at this point. You can uh, understand how if you're playing for a championship and you're down six goals, middle second period where there might be some frustration that's there. So we see uh, exactly what is decided here on this call. It looks like it's gonna still be a power play for, for Niagara as they have five players out there. I believe it ended up being a misconduct penalty given to Stumpo. So, uh, a couple of 10-minute misconducts doled out here recently, and it should be, at least from what I'm understanding, a Niagara power play coming up and an opportunity to add to their six-goal lead. Yeah, I mean, the officials are giving the bench the explanation. Uh, Casil I mean, Casilio seems to be strategizing versus pleading a case, so definitely he likes what he hears, and it will be a Purple Eagles power play where Scanlon will win the faceoff back to Chad Moore. Chad Moore will skate down to, this, to the goal line and he will hold the puck there. Moore sends a saucer pass, picked up there, not handled totally cleanly. Moore on the doorstep, shoots it just wide of the far post. Might have just rolled on him before he let that shot go. A great another opportunity for Moore. Moore again, uh, looks like there might be some intent here on this power play, uh, but you gotta take care of the puck. Picked up there by Logan Scanlon. Scanlon gets the puck to Damon Fierro. Man, can this kid get on his edges. Look, the edge work. Whoa! Fierro puts a man on the deck, and Chad Moore will then spin around Mahes, and Fierro gets the puck again as the puck goes back to Chad Moore. Moore sends the puck to Scanlon, fires for the top corner, just over top of the net. Ethan Knopf will send the puck down low to Damon Fierro. Fierro sends the puck over to Moore. Oh, Moore wanted to one see that, but he couldn't get his stick on it. Moore gains possession. Then he fires one for the glove, saved there by Goodyear. Yeah, Goodyear might have wanted to cover that one up. This group's been out there in their own zone for well over a minute on this penalty kill. And they're going to get the change right there and not a moment too soon because they they were starting to just feel it. You could hear it. You just see them huff and wind right there. Get three fresh troops out there, and here comes DiMatteo, but he will lose the puck, and it's sent back in on Josh LaSalle. LaSalle will send the puck back to Case Cook, and now he's got ahead of steam here, and Cook 
will gain the line. Nice little pass there to Euler. Euler will look to get down below the dot and he will stop and he will send it back to his point man, Cook, who will then send it to his partner, Pristall, back to Cook. Cook begins to cycle down low, sends the puck back to Zach Briggs. Briggs holds the puck right there and it will be sent there to Jason, Jacob Pristall to the captain. Briggs takes a shot, save there by Goodyear. Cook picks up the puck there on the half wall and the puck is sent to Pristall. Pristall sends it to Euler. Euler takes a shot and a diving block there and the puck will be sent out of play at the 9.55 mark of the second period as Anthony Miller returns to the ice. Yeah, they uh, kill off the penalty do the, uh, do the Thunderwolves here in this case, but that was kind of a freebie power play for Niagara because it's one of those situations where you don't have to score, you don't need a goal on the power play with a six goal lead, and Tripp absolutely had to kill that penalty. So uh, you could see that like extra little bit of breathing room that Niagara had allowed them to play with free freedom and ease there on that power play. They created a good couple of chances. They uh, certainly have and Tripp well on their heels at this point. Puck sent to the point for Jason Cucci. He'll take a wrist shot. That's blocked in front there by Luke Cross. Thunderwolves trying to get the puck to the front of the net there, but there's a D-man right in that high danger area just to knock that puck out of harm's way. Luke Cross will send the puck up here, and then it's going to be picked up there, and here comes Mandia. Nick Mandia looking to skate around. Nice move to get around his defenseman, but then he loses the puck, and the Thunderwolves will look to counter, but they're not able to as Thomason will pick up the puck in the neutral zone. He will be met there by Chase Schmidl, but then Thomason will send the puck down low, and then the Thunderwolves will look to recover. Puck sent out there, but it's held in there by Bratton. There's down low, Bratton takes the shot, and Goodyear makes the save, and he will hold on for a whistle. This is what Niagara can do when they have a lead to protect. They can back off toward the blue line when they don't have the puck in the offensive zone, and then cut off those passing lanes, suffocate the breakout of the opponent. In that case, they create the blue, the turnover right at the blue line as Marcus Bratton keeps it in the zone, then drives toward the net himself, getting a scoring opportunity. Goodyear being asked to make yet another save here in this game. The uh, Purple Eagles are just peppering him at this point and certain not to let off the gas pedal one bit. And they're in the high slot right there, still putting the puck on net. Steered just wide there, Marcus Bratton looking to pick it up there. He avoids contact there by Caleb Lee. Looks like Lee knew he was in danger right there and sort of let up and didn't finish him. Smart play by the large defenseman. Eddie Jetter looks to reverse ice the other way. He sends it over to Labruto. Labruto will chip the puck up for Chucky Schmidl, but it's held in right there at the line. And Schmidl is not able to get it out. And Kroll will look to get down low. Gets to the line! What a finish there by Kroll! Kroll using the size Get down below the goal line, pops out just above the line, and then goes right under the bar, roofs one right there, and it's eight to one, Purple Eagles. And it's eight unanswered goals for the Niagara Purple Eagles. It was NCCC getting the first marker of the game, but it's been all Niagara since then, as they have eight unanswered, and maybe that one there was the prettiest one, as Kroll buried that one up under the bar to make it a seven goal game. This is turning into a rout. It's 8-1 to one right here, and NU, knowing how they play, they're not about to stop here. And, yep, here comes Euler over the line. He takes a shot. That's blocked, but the puck is picked up there by Franklin. Franklin sends the puck back to Abbott. Long shot there, seen all the way there by Goodyear, and he will cover and hold for a faceoff. And trip with the first goal of the game on a fluky play, but it didn't bother the Purple Eagles one bit. They stacked up four goals in the first period and four more here in the second. Still 8.09 to go here in the second period, and I don't believe this Purple Eagles team is going to let up one bit. They don't mind putting up a crooked number here in this game. That, that is for sure. Not at all, but end trip still looking to counter as Kolozny will try to send the puck in deep. And again, there's five Purple Eagles back in the defensive zone, all in position. Puck is sent into the neutral zone where, where it will be picked up there and sent in there by Hess. P.J. Abbott retreats into his defensive zone, sends the puck up for Euler. Euler will send the puck up there looking for Damon Fiera. Puck taken off his stick by Jason Cucci, but then Pristall takes the puck off his stick. Here's Hasto looking to create an opportunity, but P.J. Abbott will just send it to center ice where Damon Fiera will pick it up. He's met at center ice, and it's picked up there by the Thunderwolves. P.J. Abbott again, crossing center ice, sending the puck in down low, and this is exactly what 
Ni Niagara's gonna look to do. If they can't create offense, they're just gonna get the puck out of their zone and make the Thunderwolves recover and come back at them. Yeah, that shot there coming in. Jason Cucci letting it go from the outside part of the top of the circle there on the far side. That's the type of save that Josh LaSalle is gonna make 999 times out of 100 if he doesn't stop it. Eat 999 times out of 1,000. He might make that many saves out of 100. He, he is does. that good of a goaltender. Adjusting some equipment here as we get ready for a faceoff to his glove hand side. Still seven minutes left to go here in the second period. Niagara cruising. They seem well on their way towards uh, claiming their first UNYCHL championship in only their second year of existence. And uh, they're clearly not letting the foot off the gas pedal one bit, looking for that stretch play right off the faceoff yet again. And that will be an icing, even though it appears that it may have been deflected, no matter. The faceoff will come into the NU defensive zone with just one second under seven minutes to go in the second period. And we are going to have Euler to lean in to take the faceoff against Gavin Cirillo, it appears. Yes, it will be. See if N Trip can try to muster some form of offense as we get late in the second period. Cirillo wins the draw, but Jetter was up high looking for a shot, and it gets by him, and the puck ends up all the way back in the Thunderwolves zone where Chad Moore will chase it down. Chad Moore looking to send it in front right there, picked up there by Gavin Cirillo, and he will skate inside and outside looking for the clear. Jeannot looks to step around Brady Knopf. LaSalle will come out of his crease to play the puck around to Chad Moore, and a neat little pass looking for Logan Scanlon. And you will gain possession here to gain the line, and Ethan Knopf will drop pass to take the hit by Moore. Moore with a man all over him, sends the puck to Brady Knopf with the shot. Save there by Goodyear. This could be, oh, what a play by Brady Knopf to pick that puck out of the air as Jeannot was gone if that puck gets to him. Still doing the little things here in this game. They have the seven goal lead, but uh, not gonna let those little details go by the wayside. Great play to deny a little rush opportunity for N Trip as uh, knocking that puck out of midair was the only thing that kept that from being a possible breakaway in the other direction. Nice little breakout pass there by DiMatteo, and here comes Riddle. Riddle takes a shot there, caught up high there by Goodyear, and he will hold for the faceoff. Well, Goodyear certainly had plenty of rubber thrown at him in this game. Just under six minutes to go here in period number two. Already 32 shots on goal for the Niagara Purple Eagles. They have the seven goal lead and they're doubling up their opponents in shots on goal, 32 to 16 right now. DiMatteo goes D to D to Wojciechowski. Wojciechowski sends the puck to Briggs. Briggs looks to get it in front and Goodyear gloves it off the bounce and will hold again for another faceoff. Yeah, Goodyear getting the stick out there, getting the deflection on that pass and then snatching the puck out of midair. Good work to uh, make sure that he's still doing his job properly. Nice to see the netminder not getting frustrated by the way that this game has gone in the first 35 minutes of it so far. Rinzak sends the puck in deep and they, and and trip will chase it down. Rinzak on the puck again, but there's that team defense and speed by NU and the puck is picked up here by Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle loses the puck, but the trailer comes in and Briggs lets a hard shot go. That's tipped out of play. Oh, Briggs got that on that. That would have been a really painful save to have to make because that thing was wired. Yeah, I want to point out the defensive play at the back end there as Wojciechowski doing that little bit of detail work. Again, we've been mentioning that now as uh, Niagara's opened up this lead. They're still taking care of those little details within the game like it's a nothing-nothing hockey game or like it's a tie score. The uh, stick lift there in the defensive zone keeping and trip from getting a scoring opportunity and then ed ends up leading to one for Here Niagara. Here comes Crow walking in looking for two. Nice move there, but this time the goaltender Goodyear gets the best of him. Good defensive play there by Anu. Crow gets in alone, but Goodyear still playing his game despite the fact the way it's gone for him. Still competing here. Great save there as Crow gets in alone on him. Yeah, still five minutes and change to go in second period play as Niagara is still, uh, still with the foot firmly pressed on that gas pedal, winning another faceoff in the offensive zone, now looking to set up some zone time. Kroll again picks up the puck down low. He's going to send it to his point man, Pristal. Pristal takes the shot, and again, that seen by Goodyear, and he will glove for the faceoff. Pristal looking at the bench and grinning, talking to his defensive partners there as he made a slick little play with that puck. A little bit of a toe drag to give himself the move to uh, give him the room to get that shot through. That's what you can do with a seven goal lead. You can be a little bit uh, a little bit more, take a little bit more of a chance there at the blue line. 
not as worried about it leading to a breakaway in the out, in the other direction, especially when you have this kind of cu this kind of cushion like Niagara does. Yeah, big man dangles always get the reaction, especially when they work. And right there, yeah, the bench gave a gave a little chuckle for that. And here comes Chuck Schmidl. He's got Bratton all over him. Schmidl will send it deep, and PJ Abbott will chase it down, and he'll want ring it all the way around the boards. And look at this, Niagara's going to come out of here with numbers. Thomason takes an off-balance shot, just misses the net right there. Picked up there by Damon Thierra. Massive high hit right there on Jake Thomason. And then Caleb Lee gives him a shot. Thomason just politely gestures to the scoreboard and skates away. That might have been a frustration penalty, Aaron. I certainly agree with that assessment of the situation. Good to uh, see the Niagara player not necessarily continuing anything there as uh, wouldn't have been necessarily surprised to see something start to spill over. It's a seven goal game. We still have a lot of time left in this one. You can understand the frustration that might be there. Plus they're all hockey players and uh, nobody likes to be uh, pushed around in a situation like that. So uh, good composure by the uh, Niagara player there to make sure that there was no incident coming from that hit. And uh, it's gonna be a two minute power play for Niagara. Not like they need it at this point. They've certainly done uh, all they need to do and uh, getting a little bit of help from uh, the Thunderwolves as well. Well, if there's any thought that NU might take their foot off the gas, not after that they won't. I expected more precision by the power play. Chad Moore, one-timer, got all of it, just put it wide of the, wide of the post, and it will be DiMatteo going back to gather and will reset the power play. When you have a 4-1 lead after one period of play, the best way to keep that lead intact, throw 20 shots on goal in, uh, uh, in the next period. They're at 19 right now for second period play. Still 3.45 to go here in this period. It's been an offensive onslaught for Niagara. There's and another chance in tight. As Scanlon receives a pass down low, spins around and fires one. Good year again, strong on his pads, makes the save. The end trip goaltender still playing today. That's good to see, but NU is just continuing the pressure. They are not about to let up right now. The 37th shot on goal for Niagara, as the letting up is certainly not going to be a part of the formula here as uh, they get their power play set up here and the faceoff coming up from that far dot. Puck picked up there and is held down by Pristal. Pristal sends the puck down to Euler. Euler falls but gets the puck back to his point. Pristal looks to reverse it over to Case Cook. Case Cook sends it to Pristal, sends it down to Kevin Euler. Euler has time and space, dips behind the net, gets the puck over to Case Cook. Case Cook to Pristal with the one-timer save there by Goodyear. Briggs picks up the puck now, he will send it down low. Puck is sent up high to Pristal. Pristal then takes the shot and again, seen all the way there by Goodyear and he will hang on for the whistle. Squeezes it tight to make sure there's no rebound opportunity. But again, you're seeing uh, this Niagara team getting an opportunity to practice the power play a little bit here and it's a uh, power play that, at least from the looks of it, doesn't need a whole lot of work. See the uh, perimeter passing there, quick passes along the perimeter, one touch and then on to a fellow teammate, sets up a uh, nice scoring opportunity in the end, and uh, the Niagara power play already lethal, and they're getting a chance to work on it before uh, they have nationals coming up in a couple weeks. Who would have thought a team could justify using a championship game to polish for another tournament? At the same time, you want to maybe not give up too, too much information to get it on film for some of the I opponents mean, you might face in two weeks. That's a debate that you could get into if you really want to, but that's a good problem to have. Yes, definitely. I mean, pick your poison, either show too much or play too well. And having said that, even if you know this is coming from NU, if they execute this perfectly, they are going to be a formidable opponent for anybody they face. As Pristal, showing off some silky mitts right there, sends a nice little pass over to Case Cook, who then sends it over to Zach Briggs. Briggs sends it over to the smooth-handed Pristal, who will then send it over back to Case Cook. Power play is over right here, but NU will continue to maintain possession here. Cook tries to dance between two guys. He falls, but the puck still gets down below the goal line and is picked up there by Kevin Carl. But again, not out as the puck is then fired down and it's low again. Good puck support there by the captain, Zach Briggs. Just enough work to make sure that it stayed in the zone. He didn't do anything too much, just played it off to a safe area, allowed his team to be in the offensive zone for Three a little bit. Three on all coming. Here's Matt Riddle walking in, shoots for the five hole, and a great save there by Goodyear. I have no idea how N-Trip allowed three forwards to get behind their defense, but they did, 
And their goaltender comes to the rescue, I guess, again, and makes the save as the dangerous and speedy playmaker Matt Riddle gets in alone. Good save there by Goodyear. Yeah, that looked reminiscent of Riddle's first goal last night in which he had a full head of steam, caught a defenseman a little bit flat-footed. Virtually the same thing happening in the same part of the ice there on the far side. In this case, there was a little bit of support coming from the backside defensively that forced a little bit of a quicker shot from, uh, from Riddle, but still it was a tough save for Goodyear. Had to really squeeze those pads together to keep that one from going five hole. And Tripp looking to get some offensive zone time, but DiMatteo does a nice job initially at the point of keeping it in, does it again. Looks for Nicholas Mangia and he will head in down low. Mangia's a big guy too, he works on those boards. You know, he maybe doesn't see a ton of minutes, but he gives them effective minutes and he's a pain to play against being as big as he is. Puck picked up there by NU, that's Dwarak, Thomas Dwarak. He meets Luke Cross and Luke Cross shrugs him off and then the puck will be kept in down below the line. Puck is picked up here by Riddle again. Riddle looking with speed. Riddle gets by one, but the back-checking Labruto neatly takes the puck off his stick, and here he comes. Labruto with a nice move there, but Wojciechowski does a nice job on him to force the puck off of him, and Mandia will come in here. Discipline from Niagara there defensively. That was awesome. Mandia, look at the size and the, and the strength on his skates. Puck is just wide. Ooh, Kushi may have had someone going to the net, but he decides to carry on. Nice move to get around Case Cook. Kuchi sends around, looks to get one in front. He does. Puck sitting there. Toe drag there by Chuck Schmidl. Save there by Josh LaSalle. Dwarak has Kroll on him, and Kroll just works him over and will pick up the puck. Kroll puts, his, puts the brakes down. He's got three Thunderwolves on him as we are inside the last 15 seconds of the period. Brady can off, cross ice to Cook. He'll take a shot, hits the shin guard in front. 10 seconds to go in the second period. Kanoff sort of fans on that pass right here, and Marcus Bratton will send the puck down low where Crow will hold it, and that will do it for the second period. And Niagara just puts their foot on the gas again, and they are in overdrive right now going into the third with a commanding 8-1 to one lead. It's easy to say don't let up when you build a lead like this, it's a little bit different to put it into practice. It's easy not to let up when it comes to the offensive side of hockey. Your team has that seven goal lead. You can still find that energy to put in the extra effort to get your goal, to get your assist, to get on the score sheet. What I'm impressed by here from Niagara is the attention to detail and not letting up when it comes to the defensive assignments. There were a couple of plays there in the last two minutes where Niagara players made the extra effort in the defensive zone to protect the seven goal lead. That takes a lot of discipline to do and uh, a pretty big compliment to the way this Niagara team plays the game that they're not gonna let up for one bit at any point on the ice, no matter what the lead is, no matter what the situation is. And you see it at all levels, including the NHL. I mean, not to give them free advertising, but the Buffalo Sabres scored seven goals today. They were in command the whole time. They allowed four. So to see Yes, like you said, Aaron, I don't want to call anybody selfish, but we're hockey players. You want your goals, you want your stat, you, you want, want your, your cookies. You, yeah, you want it. I mean, you play the game, you want the glory, and it's easy. Like you said, it's easy to get out there and get those, but like you're saying, as much effort as they're putting into scoring, they're putting that much effort into back checking. Maybe, I mean, I don't know what it is here, but like this team is bought in completely to the structure that Sean Casilio talks of. You hear coaches talk at all levels again, even the Buffalo Bills, the process, this, that. But you're watching this take place on the ice with this NU team. They're firmly in command and they're not gonna stop. They're playing like it's tied. A team with talent is always tough to beat. Obviously this Niagara team has plenty of talent. A talented team that plays together and plays for each other, those teams are really tough to beat. Those teams win championships and we're putting that on display here today. Purple Eagles go into the locker room with a commanding eight to one lead. Before we step away, our before we step away, our coverage is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility. Simulators, lessons, and leagues. Buffalo Golf and Social is the area's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. With a great selection of beer and wine, it is also the perfect spot to sit and watch golf with others who love the game. With locations in downtown Buffalo and Orchard Park, book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social.
This broadcast is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty. Give them a call at 716-856-2872 or at Militello.com. By West Her, the largest automotive dealer in the state of New York, selling over 50,000 pre-owned and new vehicles every year to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. West Her Auto, dedicated to absolute excellence in customer service. By the Battaglia Marciano Agency, an independent agent for auto, homeowners, commercial, and life insurance. The Battaglia Marciano Agency, providing peace of mind for Western New Yorkers for over 35 years. Give them a call at 716-675-5700. By Envious Gameware, designers of custom high-end hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel. The thinking of look good, feel good, play good goes into every Envious jersey design. Find them at enviousgameware.com to get your team a look to be envious of. And by 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions, offering consultations for web and graphic design, social media, writing and editing services, multimedia solutions, and so much more. Visit 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. That's going to do it for second period play. We're going to step away for the intermission. We will be back to you in about eight minutes here on the Nickel City Hockey Network.
I created Buffalo Golf and Social for one reason, to create a space that's different and unique from any other golf facility you've ever been to. It's a place to learn, and it's a place to enjoy. You ready? And welcome back inside Northwest Arena where we are just about ready for puck drop in the third period as the Niagara Purple Eagles have a dominating eight to one lead over the Niagara County Community College Thunderwolves. It would, it will be one thing I will say, we would, we'll, this, it would go down in hockey history if the Thunderwolves were able to come back and win this game. But before we get started there, Thank you very much for joining our broadcast as live coverage of the UNYCHL on Nickel City Hockey Network is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Buffalo's best destination for year-round practice and instruction. And Aaron, not too much to predict here, but what do you think is going to happen in this third period? Well, it's essentially going to be a 20-minute uh, ride to the title, essentially, for uh, Niagara University. It's going to take a monumental collapse on their part if they're going to lose this game. I'm not ready to just hand them the trophy after two periods. I don't think Commissioner Marchese is willing to do that either, but it's really going to take something extraordinary for this game to have any other result than a Niagara win and an NU trophy lifting here at the end of the day. But I would expect one thing for certain here in this game, Niagara is not going to do anything to let up one bit in this game. They haven't done that. They built this lead, a seven goal lead, and then they were still taking care of the little details late in the period, doing the uh, dirty work defensively, not playing with any sort of laziness that you might expect to be a possibility when you have a big lead like that. They're going to make sure that they finish this one off properly, I believe. And I also think uh, from the other side of things, Niagara County Community College, this is their last period of hockey this year. They're going to put together a, uh, a, a, an effort to be proud of and an effort for their coach to be proud of because their head coach, Drew Harris, he's retiring from his position as the head coach of Niagara County Community College after this season. He's going to be greatly missed by his players, and I'm sure that they want to send him out with a proper effort in these last 20 minutes. Absolutely, and like you had said, Aaron, it will take a monumental comeback, and the one thing you don't have to worry about from Niagara is falling asleep to allow the comeback to begin. Uh, they're going to continue to play hard. They'll score 20 if they have to today. Not out of disrespect, but Sean Casilio and the coaching staff see it as more respectful to not let up, to not pander to your opponent, to continue to play. Yeah, if you're playing a competitive game and uh, not being fully invested in it, fully engaged in the process, that leads to bad habits. And you don't need bad habits going into Nationals if you're Niagara. So... Yeah, they're not going to let up one bit here in this third period, but I expect an, a very well-played period nonetheless here in this game as uh, Niagara's put together quite the season so far, Sean, and uh, they're 20 minutes away from getting to enjoy the trophy that is the spoils of their work throughout the season. And as the, as the coaches and teammates are giving their last words of encouragement, this broadcast on Nickel City Hockey Network is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty. Well, no surprise here, Aaron. And Trip is going to send out their top line of Schmidl, Schmidl, and Labruto with the hero Caleb Lee and Jason Cucci on the back end. And then you fist pumping the goaltender, getting fired up. They're not going to coast, Aaron. They're going to play these last 20 minutes. Coach Casilio, knowing him, is going to use this as a let's tune up for Nationals now. Yeah, two of these seven goal scorers on the ice right now. Matthew Kroll had probably the prettiest goal of this game here. He's out there on the ice number 18, as well as Jake Thomason. So two of these seven different goal scorers in this game for Niagara out there as they get set to get period number three underway. Puck picked up there by Marcus Pratt, and he's got some room if he can get to this puck, but a good defensive stick there by Jason Cucci. And then he's going to look to create transition, turn defense into offense. But it was read beautifully by Jake Thomason as Pristol might have gotten away with some interference right there. Uh, but we're going to play on right here as the puck is chipped out to the neutral zone where Lee will pick it up looking for Chase Schmidl, but Bratton's going to get there first. And the Purple Eagles 
Wow, Bratton unleashes a clapper. Quick love there by Goodyear. I would love to see what the gun read that shot as Bratton wired that thing. Good glove there by the goaltender Goodyear. Yeah, Bratton was a half a step inside the top of the circle when he let that slap shot go. Got every bit of it that he wanted to on it. Good save by Goodyear as he had a good clean look at it, but had a lot on it. He had to be quick with the glove hand in order to make that stop, showing his uh, considerable skill in net. Damon Fierro looking to send a pass there to Franklin, but it's picked up there, and the Thunderwolves will look to break out with Carl. But again, relentless pressure by the forwards, and the Thunderwolves cannot get out of their own end. Here yeah. they come now. And yeah, no matter who's out there for Niagara, it's going to be a confident group. Again, this is two different, two of the goal scorers out there right now as Franklin and DiMatteo setting up some in the defensive and zone. they're different than the two that were previously out there. That's what NU can do. They're putting multiple scorers on the ice at once, and it's not the same two scorers. Here comes Damon Fiera. Hits the brakes again. Fiera looks at, oh, here comes Rinzak. Rinzak's got the puck on the bad pass. Rinzak takes the shot, but it's seen all the way into the logo by Josh LaSalle. Rinzak gives him a fair hello, and the Purple Eagles also say hi. And Rinzak's going to skate away. Rinzak getting a little close to the goaltender right there. Definitely trying to agitate a little bit. No harm, no foul, though. Certainly looking for that loose puck there along the uh, the net front and uh, got an unpleasant response there from the netminder, LaSalle, kind of threw the, uh, the toe of the stick into his midsection. That couldn't have felt too good, but uh, no goaltender likes the... Extra attention with players on top of them. They're trying to get that puck covered, especially when it's in a seven-goal game. Face-off one there by the Purple Eagles, and Brady Kanoff will send it up. It's played with a high stick right there. And they're going to say, and you touched that first. I can't sit here and pretend I could see from here who got that puck first, so we're just going to accept the call. I think sometimes when there's an avoidance to play the puck on the non-offending team, the referee just blows that one dead. When the, I've seen that that's, kind of stretch out for you know, three or four seconds, and then it almost ends up becoming a dangerous situation if nobody's playing the puck, but they can still technically play the body in that area. It's uh, yeah, good, good quick whistle there by the referee to make sure that that was a, uh, a normal-looking play finish. And again, the relentless pressure by the NU forwards will continue as Scanlon, as there are two more goal scorers that are different than the others on the ice for NU as Scanlon and Chad Moore with two are on the ice now. Cucci will go behind the net and he will send the puck up to Miller and Miller will get the puck up to Casulo who will then send a nice pass. And again, this has been one of the many but probably biggest detriment to N Triple C's game today. They just are not strong passing the puck when the opportunity's there. They are not connecting, which is leading to numbers. Good play there, though. Here's a chance here for Cirillo. Save there by LaSalle, and then the rebound was cleaned up there, and there was no second opportunity for the Thunderwolves. Cucci again gains the line, takes a low shot. Pad save there by LaSalle again, and he kicks the rebound out to center ice, and Zach Briggs will gain the line with speed. Brings, looks to put one on net, and then he puts his man on the deck, comes out with the puck, and it's laying in the crease, and finally, ha well, no, it's picked up there by Luke Cross, and you continues the presser. Pristall takes a high shot, hits the shoulder of the goaltender, Goodyear, scramble in front of the net, it's still loose. Cross picks it up there, sends it back to Abbott. Abbott sends the puck in down low, where Matt Riddle will chase it down. He's gonna look to send it down, but a good stick there by Jason Cucci, but Pristall again sends the puck in, Blocked neatly right there by the Thunderwolves. And Tripp looking to gain some speed here. Gets the puck in deep. Puck played behind by LaSalle where Pristal will take it. Big hit there by Anthony Miller. No call. That was just a collision. P.J. Abbott sends the puck off the wall. Tipped up by Riddle. Nice little play right there, but a good defensive play right there by Joey Capolino to stop what would have been a surefire scoring chance there for the Purple Eagles. Capolino sends the puck up forward, but Pristal sends it right through the neutral zone. And then Caleb Lee will send it into the NU zone where it'll be picked up there by Marcus Bratton. Bratton looks to depth. Di puck turned over in the defensive zone there and a long shot there by the Purple Eagles. Puck still sitting in the slot right there. Puck is launched into the NU bench and we're gonna get a whistle. Almost uh, a little bit more than four minutes gone here in third period play. As, uh, as we were talking about it coming into the start of the third, I would expect a good, honest effort from both sides. Uh, maybe a little bit of added physicality as uh, 
the result gets closer and closer to being a decided factor. But uh, certainly both teams are playing proper hockey here, at least in the first four minutes of action in the third. Face-off won there by NU, but it will be the Thunderwolves that keep possession for a moment. But Bratton gets the puck, and he's got speed. Bratton over the line. He's got two guys with him. He's going to hit the brakes. But it's picked up there by Jake Thomason. Jake Thomason sends the puck down low to Bratton. Bratton looking for a pass. He's got sticks all over him. But again, the Purple Eagles just calmly cycling the puck around, getting it deep, and just not allowing any sort of transition for the Thunderwolves. Thomason down below the net, looks to send it in front. It gets there, and a good save there by Goodyear on Marcus Bratton. Bratton sends the puck down low to Thomason. Thomason holds the puck there, and he drops it over to the point. Long shot there, saved there by Goodyear. Puck comes to the front of the net, cleared to the blue line, but not out. Another shot, good defensive stick right there, and the puck is going to be sent all the way over for Kolesny, but he's going to lose the puck right here, and again, NU just continuing to play in the Thunderwolf zone. Looks like they've taken a penalty, though, as uh, Kroll and Miller came together. Delayed call coming up here against Niagara. And now we're going to, oh, they're looking to fight him here, too, as Hess is just not happy with Kroll. I'm wondering if Hess cost them a power play, but yeah, Kroll hit the Thunderwolves forward way up high. He's still down. Not necessary up 8-1, I don't think, Aaron. And I mean, a player's down on the ice right now, and this isn't good. Yeah, Kroll, uh, not Kroll, but the, uh, the other player for Entrip being escorted off the ice there as that was Hess. And now Kroll's being excused yeah, as well, the referee. Awesome. Yeah, they're going to try to basically get anything stopped before it starts to boil here. It appears that the uh, at least the spark has been lit and we're starting to get a little bit of heat under the water here. This one could start to get out of control if anything more like that continues. Not necessarily a surprise to see the referees trying to make sure that that isn't a, something that goes on here in the uh, next 14 and change. Yeah, and what we got to maintain player safety right here. It is good to see Anthony Miller up on his feet right now. Uh, he's skating to the bench under his own power. Great mullet he's got too right there. Got to point that out. But um, yeah, it's we're going to see what the dealings are because we don't know if we're going to have a power play or if we're going to have even strength for the retaliation. So we're waiting to see from the refs. And while we wait on that, We'd like to say that coverage is, is sponsored by Wester, the largest automotive dealer in New York State, selling over 50,000 pre-owned and new cars every year to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. Wester Auto, dedicated to absolute excellence in customer service. And by the Battaglia Marciano Agency, an independent agent for auto, homeowners, commercial, and life insurance. The Battaglia Marciano Agency, providing peace of mind for Western New Yorkers for over 35 years. Give them a call at 716 675 Five seven zero zero. Captains play. are coming back to the bench, so it looks like we will get a decision momentarily. I think it's going to be a power play for N Triple C based on the fact that they pointed toward the Niagara zone, and they seem to be drifting in towards there for the uh, upcoming faceoff. But still, a little bit more conversation to go. I just want to tack on a couple of words uh, to uh, you're mentioning our sponsors there, and really can't thank the, our sponsors enough for making this coverage possible. We would not be able to bring you this great coverage of the UNYCHL as we have throughout the season if it isn't for the support of businesses like Buffalo Golf and Social, Militello Realty, West Tour Auto, the Battaglia Marciano Agency, also Envious Gameware, 412 Communications, the Elmira Tea and Coffee House, the Hampton Inn in Ithaca, everybody that has done their part to support our work here on the Nickel City Hockey Network. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to continue to enhance the experience of playing college hockey that these players in the league enjoy. That's essentially what we try to do with these broadcasts is to add to the experience, to add to what it's like to put the uniform on and to represent your school. And the fact that these businesses have gotten behind our efforts, I can't say enough about them and can't thank them enough for what they've done. We hope that everyone that's out there that has enjoyed these broadcasts will think about supporting the businesses that supported our broadcast here this year. Yes, cannot thank our sponsors enough because not only do they allow us to bring great coverage, but it also allows us to do what we love to do more than anything and provide our viewers and these players with this experience, and it's a great experience for us as well. I mean, we love doing this. This We get just as much enjoyment out of doing it as, we, as our players tell us they get enjoyment out of enjoying it. So a big thank you to all of our sponsors. Like Aaron has said, we would not be here 
able to do this without you, and we hope to see you all in the future. And now it is a five minute major was given, and Matt Riddle will serve the penalty for the Purple Eagles. Well, if there's time for one last gasp for the Thunder Wolves, it's this five minute power play, I would think. If they can get a couple here on this power play, it might not be totally decided yet. Definitely, the, the idea is to keep it interesting, and that's the opportunity the Thunder Wolves have. Um, however, I can tell you the Purple Eagles are not interested in any of that as they are just being aggressive right here, trying to force as many mistakes as they possibly can. Here is Spencer Rinzak looking to get down below the goal line. He has Pristol on him. Rinzak reverses ice, and he's going to send it down to Chuck Schmidl. But again, there's Jacob Pristol again. I've said his name a thousand times in the last two broadcasts. He's all over the place. Shot from distance from the point there by the Thunderwolves, gloved there by Josh LaSalle, and we will hold for a faceoff. Looked like a fairly easy catch with the glove, and then maybe he stumbled just a little bit getting his uh, skates underneath him. That's maybe the uh, biggest difficulty he's had with a save since the, that fluky one early in the game that was kicked in by a teammate. Yeah, that was a really nice save, a hard shot right there as well. I mean, the Thunderwolves are trying their best. They're doing what they can. They just ran into a juggernaut right now that's playing their system perfectly, to say the very least. But there's a power play here. Puck held in there, and there's a quick shot, and again, that glove by LaSalle. I would stop trying that if I were the Thunderwolves. It ain't going to work. The only thing quicker than his glove right now seems to be the reactions to any of the Thunderwolves in front of the net. He is not having any of that traffic in front after he makes a stop and gets the cover, and he is making sure he lets the players in yellow know that if they're near in front of him when that whistle blows. Yeah, LaSalle has made it clear. If you go to the high danger areas to try and get one on him, you're going to feel a stick or a blocker or something in your back right there. He, not only is he good, he's physical. Like he will, he will hit you, he will whack you, he is not afraid. Like he, he will do what it takes to win, and that's what he has done so far today. Power play continuing, still uh, three and a half minutes to go on this major, but uh, at least so far Niagara has done their work and done what they need to do to kill off this penalty. Puck sent over, and it's held there by the Thunderwolves. Brady Kanoff will just send the puck the length of the ice right there to kill more time. We are in three minutes and 10 seconds to go on the five minute major penalty. Casulo having some difficulty with it and Briggs will send it. Oh, what a fake there by Bratton. And then he shoots it and a good blocker save there by Goodyear. Bratton faked the slap shot and the defenders bought what he was selling. Uh, but Goodyear makes the big save. Here comes Cirillo. Cirillo through the neutral zone over the line. Avoids a check by Thomas and gets the puck to Stewart. Stewart sends one in front. Good save there, and it's held there by Kolesny. Nice setup there as Kolesny was flashing in front of the netminder. Got the deflection, but uh, not enough to get it past the netminder. We've got a delayed penalty coming up here. Uh, so it's going to be a five on three here for Entrip right now as the physical and the chippiness is starting to rear its head with 12 minutes and 17 seconds to go in regulation. Not necessarily a surprise that this one was going to get to be one of those physical affairs. They, uh, they have a little bit of history, these two squads do, so this was bound to be a physical one from the start. The fact that it's a little bit of a lopsided game will just contribute to that, I would imagine. Yeah, and again, it is the last game of the season for end trip, so I mean, I don't think they're going to try to go out in a blaze of glory right here, but they're also not going to be pushed around. They're not loving the score right here. They're going to get a chance for an extended five on three to get something back here. And it's going to be Miller, Jeannot, Carl, Capolino, and Cucci for the power play. Full two minutes with the five on three, too. Not going to get much better opportunity than this. No, this is one you got to score on here for nothing else but just, just to do something in this game. And Cucci will lead the rush as he will drop it to Carl. Carl takes a shot into a pad, and that is just not what you want to do. And we have another penalty as there goes the five on three. Yeah, this one's going against end trip as it looks like it's going to be Capolino heading to the penalty box. So the uh, five on three opportunity goes by the boards, but uh, still a four on three coming up as it's uh, plenty of ice out there right now available for both sides. This could actually be fun. We might be getting to NHL threes at some point here. Lots of open ice for two, for two incredibly fast teams here. This doesn't happen a whole lot, so interesting to see what plays out here. Yeah, but the faceoff's going to start in the end trip zone as uh, they were the uh, offending team on the most recent penalty. They win the faceoff, though, in established possession. Uh, let's see how they move it up ice. 
And Tripp looking to wheel it through, and here comes Janot. He loses an edge, but he gets the puck over to Caleb Lee, who gains the line, and the Thunderwolves will get to set up shop with the four on three. Cucci on the point, sends it to Caleb Lee. Lee takes a high shot. It's, wow! That wouldn't have counted, but it was still a really cool looking save there by Josh LaSell to kind of Superman dive and scoop it in one motion. Josh LaSalle doesn't care if it's going to count. He just doesn't want pucks in his net, and I don't blame him. Yeah, because that puck was played with a high stick, the faceoff will come outside of the zone into the neutral zone along the Niagara blue line. That was the uh, 24th save of the game for Josh LaSalle. The only shot that's gotten past him. I'm not even sure you can count that one as a shot as it went off of the two defensemen's skates in front of him was a fluky goal, and the only thing that has gotten into the back of his net tonight and I'm sure that uh, he has it in mind to make sure that the number under the guest name on the scoreboard stays at one for the remainder of this contest. Absolutely, and Jason Cucci will gain the puck in his defensive zone. He loses it a little bit, and that is all Luke Cross needs to take a run at him. Doesn't get there, but Luke Cross is going back on the back check, and the Thunderwolves do not gain any numbers here. Lead to the point. We'll look for the play here as he stops, and he sends it down to Jason Cucci. Jason Cucci looking for Caleb Lee, looks him off, then drops it to him. Caleb Lee again, and look at Luke Cross just taking up as much space as he can, making everything difficult for the Thunderwolves. Here's Schmidl walking in, takes a shot, and LaSalle comes high on the blue paint to make the save, and he will cover. Almost knowing that the shot was coming and that Schmidl wouldn't choose to pass there, he was a, uh, a good stride out on top of the blue paint there. There was nothing for Schmidl to shoot at. And uh, LaSalle makes the save, makes it look routine, and keeps this one an 8-1 hockey game. 8-1 hockey game still with a few seconds remaining on the four on three, and Scanlon gets possession off the draw from Chucky Schmidl, and the puck is sent down, where no or Noah Curial will pick up the puck, and he will look to start the breakout. Here comes Curial as he goes down the right side of the, of the rink, Sends a pass through the crease, nobody home. Eddie Jetter moving in from his point position. Will go below the goal line, sends it across. Pristall gets the puck out of the box as Brady Knoff. Steps by Schmidl, Knoff, one move, two move, and a good save there by the goaltender Goodyear. Great patience from both Brady Knoff and the netminder Goodyear. They both tried to be waiting out each other, it seemed there, and uh, each of them uh, equal to the task. A great save again as Goodyear slides across to throw the blocker out and deny Scanlon his second of the game. And Tripp looking to get it out of the zone, and they will, but it'll be picked up right there by Zach Briggs, and Briggs will, will circle all the way back into his own end, looking to kill more time, goes for the home run pass, looks for Knopf, doesn't matter because there's not going to be an icing as he beats it off, bad angle shot, and it looks like we, and we are now back to even strength. But end trip again in their own zone, having to play defense and trying to settle it down to get the breakout started up the near side. They can't get it past Moore at the left point, though. And trip still, excuse me, the Purple Eagles still sending two guys down below to try and dig that puck out. Puck sent to DiMatteo, takes the shot. High blocker save there by Goodyear. Chad Moore tracks it down in the corner, and he will send the puck down low where Ethan Knopf will pick up the puck behind the Thunderbolts. Oh, reverse back pass, and a great save there by Goodyear as the one-timer was connected on. Great blocker save by the Thunderwolves goaltender. Love that play where it looks like you're skating around behind the net, but quickly throw that puck behind you in front, trying to catch the goaltender, leaning a little bit towards the side you're heading toward. Great setup, but good play by the netminder Goodyear to stay with it and not overcommit to that circling play. Faceoff coming up to the left of the Thunderwolves, and they will lean in, and again, NU will gain possession, and they will send it in deep with Brady Kanoff. Last shot on goal by Niagara, their 50th of the game. If you're playing for a championship, and you have 50 shots on the board, the still with almost nine minutes to go in regulation, I like your chances. Yeah, you've done something right if you're getting 50 shots on goal. Don't tell the Florida Panthers that, but usually when you get 50 shots on goal, you put yourself in a great spot to win here. And not only that, 50 shots on goal imply heavy puck possession, but literally it's felt like almost three, four, three quarters of this game have been played in the Thunderwolves end. And it seems to be starting to take a toll, especially on the Thunderwolves defensemen. They seem to be getting worn out here in this game and that makes it even more difficult to get the puck out of your zone when you've been hemmed in for 
what is now uh, 50 minutes and change of game time. They've spent a lot of time in their own zone, and I can understand how the defenseman could be getting tired at this point in the game. I know I would be if I was out there playing defense for the team in yellow. I don't even want to think about playing defense in a college hockey game, much less one where my team gives up 50 shots. It, it already makes my injured knee ache a little bit, so I give these kids credit. They're, they're warriors. They're not quitting. They're not backing down. They're still playing the game uh, where a lot of teams would have quit by now, so definitely hats off to end trip still continuing to play still continuing to put forth effort but i mean you hit a juggernaut hitting its stride yeah i want to continue to you know take my hat off as well to end trip this is a tough tough battle to have to face the third top five team in a week that they've had to play against they beat the number one team in the country last week st bonaventure knocking them out in the quarterfinals they beat the number four team in the nation, Binghamton, last night to earn a spot here in the championship game. The number two team, Niagara, is proving to be a really tough one for them as uh, it's tough to knock off three top five ranked teams in a row in one week's time. Certainly have to uh, give a lot of compliments to what Niagara County Community College has put together here in the postseason, no matter how this game ends up. Absolutely. You just... At the end of the game, we love hockey, and it's good to see kids playing for the love of the game. This is not easy. We've all been on both sides of games like this. We've been on the side where we're blowing teams out. We've all been blown out before. It's been relatively clean, minus a few instances here and there. Aaron and I, you and I have done a lot of games together. We've seen lopsided games like this where you can't go three seconds without a, without a questionable or dirty hit or some sort of altercation. So it's good to see that that has been minimized to this point as Casulo looks to gain the line, but P.J. Abbott will gain possession of the puck in his own end. He will send the puck up off the boards and out. Puck is picked up there where Casulo will pick up the puck and he will send the puck to his teammate, but again, the shot is blocked and NU will look to get the puck to center ice. And here come the Thunderwolves again. Here comes Joey Capolino looking to get to the slot, drops a pass, here comes a shot. Good save there by Josh LaSalle. Gavin Cirillo takes a shot just wide. Abbott will cover it, shoots it into the back of Marcus Bratton. I bet he's going to tell you he did that on purpose to lead to a breakout, and the Purple Eagles will get it deep. At least two times in that trip into the offensive zone for N-Trip, we'll see it was uh, Niagara players getting into the shooting lanes and getting blocks to keep their goalfriend tender from having to face a shot. It's a seven-goal lead, and they're still blocking shots. Continue to complement the way this Niagara team plays. We're going to have a penalty coming up here to end triple C as Matt Riddle got taken out in the neutral zone. Good to see him getting up to his skates quickly. It looked like that could have been knee-on-knee -knee contact. Yes, I believe that's what the call is going to be. As, uh, we got a trip. End triple end trip player went straight to the box, it looks like. He knew right away that he was getting the call there. Joey Capolino guilty of the tripping call in this instance, so another trip to the power play for Niagara. Like they need any more time to work on their man advantage skills, it seems that they're going to give... Uh, Maybe a couple other players will look at it. Now this, is, this looks like the second unit out there for this power play. Plenty of offensive talent out there as they look to get their ninth goal of this game. Josh LaSalle will drop the puck back there for DiMatteo. DiMatteo will chip the puck up for his captain, Jet, um, Zach Briggs. Briggs has a little trouble from Stewart here, and here comes Anthony Miller. Anthony Miller down low. Send a backhand. Not much difficulty there by Josh LaSalle, and then you will break it out. Looking for Matt Riddle, oh, just an inch too far away from him. But Luke Cross coming in pursuit on the back end, sends the pass, there's the shot, and there's the goal. Puck is shot in there by the captain, Zach Briggs, and it's a nine to one lead for the, thun for the Purple Eagles. As shot hits the goaltender, jumps straight up in the air, finds the back of the net, and the route continues for the Purple Eagles. When everything's going right, everything goes right. In that case, it was a uh, the fluttering puck after the goaltender makes the save. It takes the proper bounce to end up in the back of the net. And Niagara has uh, their ninth goal, their eighth different goal scorer, and their captain is on the board. He scored one of the goals in yesterday's win over Cornell, and now he has a goal here in the championship game as well as it's now a 9-1 lead in favor of the Purple Eagles. Puck in the neutral zone, sent up there by Scanlon, a little too far there for Ethan Knopf. Where it will, where Noah Curial will retreat back behind his net. It's picked up there and it's carried by Chase Schmidl. Nice pass up to Chucky Schmidl. Just comes off his stick, strong on his skates from the angle. Schmidl for the rebound, and Janot couldn't put it in. And here come the Purple Eagles back with numbers three on two. 
Drop pass to Ethan Knopf, takes the shot and a glove save there by Goodyear. Like I just said a moment ago, when everything's going right, everything goes right. The flip side of that is when everything's going wrong, that tends to continue, that trend just tends to keep happening. In that case, Ren Triple C, that was an empty net for Janot to put that one into. Just fanned on the shot, couldn't get enough wood on it. It's uh, one of those cases where if it goes wrong, everything that will go wrong can go wrong. What's the law, Murphy's, what's yeah. the law Murphy's Law? Yeah, I think that's exactly what I'm referencing there, but not getting the proper words in the proper order to I explain it. I might be it. wrong. I'm just, I've heard that before. And no, I, might yeah, I think you have it correct. I just wasn't necessarily quoting it properly. So the idea is that, uh, you know, sometimes it just doesn't it's go your way. Your day, but here's Joey Labruto. Let's see what he's got. Labruto gets, oh, what a play the ref with the pick, and the save is still made. I don't mean to laugh, but the ref set a pick for Labruto to spring him by accident and LaSalle still makes a ridiculous save. LaSalle makes a great save and then Thiera comes back late on the play as he was the one that got tied up with the referee in transition there. He didn't give up on the play. He got back towards the front of the net after LaSalle made the save and the puck went up in the air. It was Thiera knocking it out of the air to make sure it got behind the net and out of danger. It's uh, another example of this Niagara team not letting any attention, not letting the attention to detail go even one moment by the wayside. Great play by Thierra to make sure his goaltender didn't have to face another shot from in tight. And there's your theory again. An, 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 an incidental collision between Thierra and the ref springs Labruto. We know all about him, Aaron. He is as dangerous as they come when he has the puck. And LaSalle makes a ridiculous save. And then ridiculous hand-eye coordination by Thierra just thwarts any chance of that thing rolling in. Case Cook will pick up the puck in his own end and he will flip the puck out to center ice for Thomas Dvorak, where he will send it to Brady Kanoff. Now at this point, and you not sloughing off, but they're content with just sending the puck out to center ice as it's an eight goal lead with four and a half minutes to go. Niagara seems well on their way towards earning the UNY CHL Tier 1 Championship here in the 2022-23 season. He's Bratton again with that slap shot. Yeah, that's two or three times in this uh, third period alone that he's unloaded a big clapper. This one missing high and wide. Puck sent through where it's picked up there by P.J. Abbott. Abbott goes D to D to Jacob Pristall. Pristall will carry the puck over the line and he will send the puck all the way in where Goodyear will play it. Caleb Lee will pick up the puck down below his goal line and he will look to break it out. But again, pressure right there. No call. Bratton goes for the high snipe. Misses just wide. P.J. Abbott will recover at center ice and he's just going to wing it in below the goal line. Little communication on the change here for end trip. Here comes Jacob Pristall with the puck. Pristall goes D to D to P.J. Abbott. Abbott sends a pass through the middle. Doesn't connect anywhere. But here comes Thomason. Thomason's got the puck here, takes the shot. It's blocked, weird they bounce, and they, they score. No, no goal. The puck ended up in the net. They're going to wave it off. Oh, and Mandy thinks he's got one, but they're going to they're gonna wave it off here, so it is not the 10 spot here for the Purple Eagles. I think the referee's saying that that one was kicked in by Mandia. It looks like it might have been. Number 23 certainly not agreeing with that call, but uh, that is what the decision has been, so it remains a 9-1 game. I don't think it's really going to matter in terms of uh, what the result is. It'll just kind of be a little bit of a difference in terms of what the final score is on the scoreboard. Neutral zone faceoff is what will be coming up here after the referees consult. Certainly want to pass along some congratulations here as uh, not only Niagara seems to be in line to win a championship, but we also handed out the Tier 2 championship earlier on today, and that was a thrilling 3-2 overtime victory for the St. John Fisher Cardinals, Antonio Femia scoring the game winner in overtime to give the Cardinals the Tier 2 championship in the UNYCHL. Certainly uh, proud of their efforts as well. They should be coming out and uh, putting, a, putting away a scare from the University of Rochester. U of R had the lead 1-0 in the third period. They came back and Ooh. retook the lead. It was a 2-1 St. John Fisher lead, but then late in the game, under 10 seconds to go, Rochester forced overtime. But then Femia, the hero in the OT period, gives his team the 3-2 win and the Tier 2 title. Going to check one other score across the country right now as we were anticipating this Niagara-Niagara County Community College matchup. A lot of people in the south were looking forward to Tampa against South Carolina. Maybe that one's kind of... 
giving the same kind of result. That's a 6-1 hockey game in favor of the <laughs> University of Tampa. They're good. As it appears the uh, Tampa Spartans are ready to put together a an undefeated regular season. They're about to go 26-0 and and claim the uh, – College Hockey South Championship oh, as boy. they lead by a score of 6-1. to one. Still early on, still second period play in that one, so keep an eye on that one before we step away here at the end of our broadcast here from Jamestown. Luke Cross gets the puck down below the line, and he will side one to Matt Riddle. Riddle sends a long pass looking for Briggs. It's going to get to him despite the bounce, and he will hold possession there. Riddle gets held there, but no call, and... Excuse me, Briggs gets held there, no call. Riddle sends the puck down low where Cucci has it below his goal line. Pass, long pass tipped in there by Anthony Miller, but it's picked up there by Stumpo. Stumpo will send it up to Zach Briggs, and Briggs will get the puck up to Luke Cross. Time and space as he gains center ice and just fires one. Wow! NU is just not afraid to just wind up and let the thing go. That is the third slap shot coming in hot on the goaltender Goodyear. Made the save on all three of them, but man, these kids from NU can really shoot the puck. And certainly not afraid to uh, continue to do so. The fact that it's a 9-1 game, they haven't, uh, they haven't let the foot off the gas even one iota here in this game. And uh, playing properly, but not necessarily trying to go for too much of the kill shot here. They're still taking advantage of their opportunities and playing properly defensively. There's a great block again. And a great save on the rebound there by LaSalle, and he's back up in a position. Puck sent up and out of play as we're going to get an offensive zone faceoff for the Thunderwolves as we are down to the final 91 seconds of this Tier 1 championship. I don't like to get ahead of myself, Aaron, but I think it's fair to say that NU is going to host the trophy in about 90 seconds of game time. And congratulations, uh, almost a little bit prematurely, going out to the coaching staff as well as the players from Niagara University. A fine season put together here by this Purple Eagle squad. And this program has really put something special together in uh, two years' time, or more accurately to say three years' time, as uh, they didn't play at all during the 2021 or the 2021 season, as the league didn't have any play for the uh, due to COVID restrictions. They used that season as a, as a way to kind of get the foundation built, and then they were ready to hit the ground running last year, putting together a very successful season, making a trip to the national tournament, and then just building off of that since then. This year, they have uh, what's about to be their 22nd win, I believe. Only two losses, two OT losses as well. But uh, this oh, has been it? a fine performance so far. As Moore looks for the hat trick, yep. nice save. And I don't blame him. I'd want it too. Good save there by Goodyear. But Aaron, back to what you were saying. Yes, I mean, this coaching staff and this NU program has built something spectacular in very little time at all. Like you said, they, instead of letting it defeat them, they found a way to find a positive with the COVID, um, COVID season, came out strong, came in with another strong recruiting class, and they are 20 seconds away from a championship as Jason Cucci will gather the puck, and that's going to be just about it. Cucci will pass the puck. The Purple Eagles begin to pump the boards as we are down to the final five seconds. Four, three, two, and one, and there it is. The Ni Niagara Falls will be lit up purple in 2023 as your 2023 UNYCHL Tier 1 champions, the Niagara Purple Eagles in dominant fashion. A 9-1 win in the end for the Niagara Purple Eagles and they're going to celebrate a championship in their second year of play in the UNYCHL. The Niagara Purple Eagles are the champions of Tier 1 and a command performance all weekend long, winning their two games by a combined score of 14 to two. They are a deserving champion of the UNYCHL, that's for sure. Yeah, there's not gonna be a single doubt by anybody who watched this tournament that the best team here won the won it. End trip, what a story they are. I will, they were the Cinderella story. They came in, they came into tier one, they wanted to be here. They felt they deserved it and they could compete. They proved every. They proved themselves right here. They're not going to go away. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with for a long time with what they've built. Disappointing now losing the way they have after such a great season. But this team will be back and they will be hungry. And as for NU, it continues. They started hot. They're scorching hot right now. 
they accomplish the first goal, which is winning the Tier 1 title. Now the real prize is on the horizon as they prepare to head to Nationals. They are the number two team in the nation. That won't be adjusted. The rankings have closed before playoffs got started. So they'll go into Nationals as the number two ranked team in the national tournament. And based on the way they're playing hockey right now, the way that they played yesterday against Cornell, today against Niagara County Community College, it's going to take quite a performance to knock them out of the national tournament. Absolutely, and the teams that are going to be there will be capable of that, but this team has hit a stride that a lot of teams can only dream of hitting. This team is firing on all cylinders. They're playing great in every zone on the ice. I can't wait to see what they bring us in Nationals. And I can't wait to see what the 23-24 season has ahead in this division. With NU, with N-Trip as a mainstay, they'll be one of the favorites coming in as well. It's going to be great to see what we have ahead of us. And before we get down to the trophy presentation, our coverage is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility with simulators, lessons, leagues. Buffalo Golf and Social, the area's top destination for year-round practice and instruction with a great selection of beer and wine. Also the perfect place to sit and watch golf for those who love the game. Locations downtown Buffalo and Orchard Park. Book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. Broadcast is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker to buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property. Trust the unparalleled knowledge of Militello Realty at 856-2872 or at Militello.com. By West Herd, the largest automotive dealer in the state of New York, selling over 50,000 pre-owned and new cars and automobiles to customers in Rochester, Syracuse, and Buffalo. Dedicated, West Herd is to absolute excellence in customer service. We're going to head down right now for the presentation of the trophy and the player of the game. And as we're back watching the Niagara University Purple Eagles celebrate their championship, we do want to acknowledge that, um, acknowledge the rest of our sponsors as support for UNYCHL coverage on Nickel City Hockey Network is also brought to you by the Battaglia Marciano Agency, an independent agent for auto, homeowners, commercial, and life insurance. The Battaglia Marciano Agency, providing peace of mind for Western New Yorkers for over 35 years. Reach them at 716-675-5700. By Envious Gameware, designers of custom high-end hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel. 
the thinking of look good, feel good, play good goes into every envious jersey design. Find them at enviousgamewear.com to get your team a look to be envious of. And finally, by 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions, offering consultation for web and graphic design, social media, writing and editing services, multimedia solutions, and more. Visit 412communications.com. We're going to step away for a quick break, and we'll be back to you in about a minute with our three stars of the game. I created Buffalo Golf and Social for one reason, to create a space that's different and unique any other golf facility you've ever been to. It's a place to learn. And it's a place to enjoy. You ready? People ask, what is Buffalo Golf and Social? Buffalo Golf and Social is anything you want it to be. It can be the best instruction. It can be a vibe. It can be a hangout with your friends, running a simulator for four hours, playing your own playlist, and putting a game up on the TV. We are about everything and anything pertaining to golf. And most importantly, we are trying to build a community of players and a community of people who love and are dedicated to the game. And welcome back to Northtown or Northwest Arena in Jamestown, New York on the Western Post Game Show as we will present tonight's three stars. And Aaron, what do we have today? Well, I certainly want to give credit to the Niagara netminder Josh LaSalle as the third star. He was the third star in last night's game. And, uh, I mean, in an eight-goal win, eight win, it's really tough to say that it was a goaltender that was part of it, but he was a big part of it. Really, it was a fluky bounce that got past him. That's the only thing that kept this from being a shutout for number one, Josh LaSalle, a deserving third star, but you could probably have put any number of a dozen Niagara Purple Eagles into this three stars tonight because they had enough players that were capable or certainly worthy of being honored in this way. Second star, Zach Briggs, he had a goal late and uh, kind of part of the, that's a nod to the overall leadership that Zach shows. Uh, this team is so successful because of the way he plays and the example he sets on the ice. Zach Briggs, more of the uh, long time, uh, the lifetime contribution award here as the second star than Chad Moore. Two goals here in this game. He gets our top star as uh, also want to acknowledge that they gave the uh, overall MVP for the tournament to Ethan Knopf, the uh, dangerous forward for Niagara as he had a big weekend here. He had a goal and two assists yesterday, three assists in this game today. So one goal and five assists for Ethan Knopf, certainly worthy as the MVP candidate. But uh, you could honor any number of maybe, like I said, about a dozen players for Niagara for their performance, not only in this game, but all weekend long. The easy win, 5-1 over Cornell yesterday, and then the 9-1 romp here in the title game. Yeah, I mean, and you showed why they were as vaunted as they've been coming into the season. This was expected of them coming into the year. They've achieved the goal, doing it the right way in all three zones, offense, defense, neutral zone and on special teams. They're a very well-coached team. Sean Casilio and his staff, they're very passionate. They've set a very high standard despite not having a team in this league for very long. Does not matter. This team, they were good enough to compete for it last year. They come in with a mission and win it this year. They are going to be a massive force to be reckoned with at Nationals. That is uh, an understatement for sure as uh, you're gonna have to play your best game no matter who you're talking about out there across the country. It's going to take an absolute whirlwind of an effort in order to take down this Niagara team. They showed that today against the per, the previous Giant Killers and Triple C. They had already knocked off two top five teams, the number one team and the number four team nationally in the last week. Niagara wasn't intimidated one bit. They came out and they gave their proper performance and they won going away. Yep, and they left no doubt that the best team in this tournament in Tier 1 won the event. 
handedly. They really weren't challenged at any point this, this tournament. Now that did not stop them from playing with a sense of desperation almost as they were still blocking shots, sacrificing the body, doing everything the right way, whether it was tied, whether they were down for a second for the minute and a half they were down or whether they were up big, it does not matter. There's a system, there's a structure, there's a way you will play if you're gonna put on this Purple Eagles uniform. And that is how this was, and that is just how that was executed today. An entire season's worth of work coming to a head here. Wonderful to see this for such a young program, a program I have a ton of respect for. A lot of players I have a ton of respect for. Cannot wait to watch them in the national tournament. Nine goals scored by eight different players. Let's name them off before we step away here and sign off on the broadcast. Aiden Wojciechowski got the game's first goal for Niagara in that seeing eye point shot, doinking it in off of both posts. Chad Moore had his first of the game in the first period as well. Scanlon and Thomason getting their goals before the first period ended. Then it was Matt Kroll in the second period getting a pretty goal up under the bar. Uh, Franklin, Josh Franklin, he got his goal in the second period as well as that was right at the point where uh, Niagara was pulling away and putting the, ham the, the nail in the coffin. Or just three on two execution on that goal. Yeah, and then you know, Moore's second of the game there in the, uh, in the middle frame. DiMatteo adding one before the second period was over. It was an 8-1 lead going into the third period. The captain, Zach Briggs, adding a little extra insurance there in the third period. And the netminder, Josh LaSalle, 22 of 23 saves in a... Uh, just a standard performance for him as he continues to shut the door on opponents. It takes almost a perfect shot to beat him or the flukiest of fluky bounces. That's how NCCC got their goal. That was early on in this game, and then the, the, the tide went in the other direction really fast. Nine unanswered goals for Niagara, and they're skating out of Jamestown with a trophy to head back to the Cataract City with the Niagara University Purple Eagles champions of the UNYCHL this year. And, right, and just before we head out for the season, we just want to give one last shout out to all of those who made this possible as our coverage is presented by Buffalo Golf and Social, Western New York's leading indoor golf facility, simulators, lessons, leagues, Buffalo Golf and Social, the area's top destination for year-round practice and instruction. With a great selection of beer and wine, it is also the perfect place to sit and watch golf with others who love the game. With locations in downtown Buffalo and Orchard Park, New York, book your next event at Buffalo Golf and Social. This broadcast is also brought to you by Militello Realty, Western New York's premier commercial real estate broker. To buy, sell, or lease any office, industrial, retail, or investment property, trust the unparalleled knowledge and experience of Militello Realty at 856-2872 or at militello.com. By WestHer, the largest auto automotive dealer group in the state of New York, selling over 50,000 pre-owned, new, and used automobiles every year to customers in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. WestHer Auto dedicated to absolute excellence in customer service. By Envious Gamewear, designers of custom high-end hockey uniforms, bags, and apparel, the thinking of look good, feel good, play good, goes into every Envious jersey design. Find them at enviousgamewear.com to get your team a look to be envious of. And finally, by 412 Communications, the new gold standard in digital media solutions, offering consultations for web and graphic design, social media, writing and editing services, multimedia solutions, and more. Visit 412communications.com to learn how they can help your brand build bridges with the people you serve. Aaron, do we have any final thoughts before we head out, and do we have an update on the U-Tampa-South Carolina game? We can check on that one before we step away, but uh, just some final thoughts to put a bow on the season. Thanks to Commissioner John Marchese and everyone throughout the UNYCHL for doing everything that they have to make these broadcasts possible. Uh, thanks of, again to our sponsors for their financial support allowing us to do, as Sean said, what we love to do, calling hockey games, de delivering these broadcasts to you no matter where you're watching from at home or if uh, you're watching on the replay later on. This is uh, something that I know a lot of people get a lot of enjoyment out of, whether or not it's parents, friends, family, or the players getting to go back and watch the games themselves. We certainly appreciate the chance to put on these broadcasts for everyone, and uh, it is thanks to the support that we have gotten from not only our sponsors, but the league and everyone throughout the UNYCHL that has uh, backed what we do here in these broadcasts. So certainly want to take one last moment to thank everybody behind the scenes that have allowed us to do our work, as well as thanking you, Sean McHugh, Jeff Jazerowski, our camera operator, as uh, you guys have put together some incredibly hard work all season and uh, allowed us to put out these great broadcasts to people so they can enjoy the home, enjoy the games from home 
with the high quality experience that people have come to expect from the Nickel City Hockey Network. Looking forward to another season of the UNYCHL next year. Looking forward to seeing what the UNYCHL teams can do in Philadelphia in a couple weeks as well. I agree wholeheartedly, Aaron. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate you for bringing me into this back in 2019 as just a volunteer color commentator. Can't believe what we've built this into today. Uh, special thanks to Jeff as well, his great camera work. We do have the best cameraman in the business, and that's the end of it. Um, anybody would be lucky to have a cameraman like Jeff to capture these games for them. Jeff does the right thing. He does great work to make sure that these can be memories that people can hold on to forever. Can't thank him enough as he is not, he, he does not talk on these broadcasts. So he needs to get his due right now as we are nowhere near as successful as we've become without Jeff's outstanding work. Really, the, uh, when it comes to the video part of these broadcasts, that is the most important part of what we do. If the video's garbage, it doesn't matter what Sean and I say to accompany the video because it won't have the same impact the entire experience isn't the same. Jeff's work can't be uh, talked about enough because the reason why our broadcasts are the quality that they are, it's because of the dedication and the work that Jeff puts in. So just want to echo Sean's thoughts of thank you there, as well as uh, just the effort you put in, Sean, as well, to continue to, you know, get into this into this field this has been something that we both kind of uh, started as a whim almost in terms of hockey it, announcing but it's something that uh, believe it or not the driving force is standing right behind us i'll never forget it just said hey he's got an uncle in the nhl bring him in as a commentator and here we are and certainly it's been uh, everything we could have hoped for thanks to everyone at home for watching along with us this all throughout this year as well as the games this weekend that's uh, about, about it. That puts a finishing touch on a pretty great season in the UNYCHL, and we certainly have appreciated the opportunity to bring these games to you on the Nickel City Hockey Network. Sean, I'll let you sign us off for the year. Well, that's going to do it today. We got the St. John Fisher Cardinals taking the Tier 2 title by a final score of 3-2 to two in overtime. The Niagara University Purple Eagles with a dominant assertive performance to win the Tier 1 title to wrap up our UNYCHL season. For the final time this year, thank you everybody for watching, for supporting us. We couldn't do this without you. For the final time, I'm Sean McHugh. For color commentator and producer Aaron Alpern, for the best cameraman in the league, Jeff Jezerowski, thank you again. We'll sign off, and we'll see you next season.